This is TNA, the new face of professional wrestling. To be human is to dream. It gives us inspiration, hope, purpose. It is the sustenance of our souls. 100 years ago, a farmer's son, Henry Ford, followed a dream. And in the years that followed, the city of Detroit was transformed into a proud, powerful metropolis. 100 years later, a proud company with a bold dream also stands at the defining moment in its evolution. Poised for greatness, bound for glory. It is a company of dreamers, leaders, men with an unyielding desire to forge a legacy that echoes throughout eternity. It is a company with a diverse and boundless spirit. The spirit of TNA burns brightly in the hearts of Christopher Daniels and the phenomenal AJ Styles, two of the most talented athletes ever to enter the ring. It is evident in the youthful defiance and veteran savvy of their opponents, LAX. It is embodied by every member of the innovative X Division, none more so than the two aerial daredevils, Chris Sabin and Senji, who will seek to defy limitations in their championship battle tonight. It will be on display in the Monsters Ball when these four men show the world that although metal and steel are stronger than flesh, they are not stronger than spirit. It is personified in Christian Cage and the War Machine Rhino, two men who came to TNA because they wanted to elevate themselves above mediocrity. It is in the pride, passion, and intensity of perhaps the greatest wrestler alive today, Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. And it is the driving force for the legend known as Sting, a ring veteran reinvigorated with youthful ambition, as well as for his opponent, the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Jeff Jarrett. Tonight, men will strive, battles will be waged, limitations defied. But most of all, tonight, the evolution continues. Tonight, the dream is realized and the dream grows. And now, Mortal Kombat Armageddon presents Bound for Glory. Tonight, from Detroit, Michigan, TNA presents our biggest pay-per-view ever. Headlined by Jeff Jarrett versus Sting. NWA title versus career, and get this, Kurt Angle, special enforcer, Bound for Glory is next. Well, we've been hearing about Austin Star for months. 
And what an ego this cocky son of a gun has. He hails from TV land. His wrestling influences, well, they range from Jesse Ventura to Randy Savage to the Valiant Brothers to superstar Billy Graham to Rick Rude to the Grand Wizard. Singer's influence, Cindy Lauper, his role model, Huggy Bear, from the TV show Starsky and Hutch, if you can believe that. And yes, tonight, a star is born. That's what the sign says. We'll find out tonight at Bound for Glory. Kevin Nash joins us here at the booth. And we'll start the uh, Bound for Glory. Kevin Nash, open invitation. Oh, that's going to be Battle Royal from Bound for Glory. I can't even say it all. And the second competitor from Bombay, India, Son Chita! Are you ready for the original player from the Himalaya? It's Son J. Dutt on his way to the ring, and yes, we're gonna start it off in this gauntlet matchup with these two wrestlers. We will have a new competitor join this matchup every minute. We'll have the countdown clock on your screen. Elimination in this match, pretty simple. Toss the man over the top rope down to the arena floor. When his feet touch, he's out, he's eliminated. Once we get to the final two competitors, you're gonna decide it by pinfall or submission, and here we go, DW. Well, you can see right there, we're gonna start off with Austin Starr and Sanjay Dutt, as we'll get Kevin Nash here hooked up here in a minute so that he can converse with us. Am I on? Oh, you're, you're on. on. Oh, what, what, kind of, what kind of stuff is this? I'm gonna give you a dead mic. Well, that was my suggestion. Oh, You're coming through loud and clear, Kevin Nash. First this off, is unbelievable. I've got to ask you, what is this fascination that you have with the X Division? We've seen it for the past several months here in TNA. Well, I mean, anybody that's followed my career knows that I've basically been a high flyer. And uh, I mean, this is the greatest high flyers in the world. Excuse and, uh, me? Yeah. At seven feet tall, 300 plus pounds, you're talking about being one of the greatest high flyers ever? You've got to be kidding me. Check out Austin Scott on the offensive. Countdown clock shows that we're five seconds until the next competitor. Who's it going to be? Sanjay Dutt still in. Well, you should know. Who did I, I don't know who I, there's so many stars tonight. Well, oh. the next competitor, Maverick Matt. The former X Division champion, Maverick Matt, that's who it is. Keep in mind, what a display this is going to be of the X Division action. And again, you've got to be thrown over the top ropes. Feet have to hit the ground to be eliminated. As you can see right now, Maverick Matt. What's Matt looking at me for? I don't know. We got the crowd sitting around here yelling your name. Oh, nice double shot there by Austin Starr and Maverick Matt on Sanjay Dutt. Remember, in this gauntlet, you're eliminated by being tossed over the top rope down to the arena floor. Every minute, a new competitor in as, yes, Austin Starr drops the elbow. What is the story behind this trophy that you have? Looks like it's a bowling trophy, for God's hey, sake. It's not a bowling trophy. It's, I mean, yeah, it's, it is a bowling it trophy. A bowling. It's got Don Carter up on top of it. What are you talking about? I don't think my dad's going to miss that. It's the smallest one. Oh. He spared no expense. Nothing. Nice shot right there by Sanjay Dutt. Who's next, Kevin? Jay Lethal! Jay Lethal! You got a cup on? Well, I gotta admit, I like who you've got out here so far, Kevin. Four great X Division athletes. Oh, great action. I'm still trying to picture you coming off of the top rope. Just watch the best uptake. Check out the double team move. Maverick Matt fired off. Sanjay oh. takes out the leg. Oh, Jay Lethal follows up with a drop kick into the face. Sanjay Dutt coming right back at him. Maverick Matt right there. Writhing on the floor of the mat. Now Austin Starr. Think about this. Sanjay Dutt, Austin Starr to win this thing are going to have to stay out longer than anybody and survive everybody that comes out here, and it's almost an impossible task. You know one thing about this Austin Star, this guy's got more of a buildup than anybody I've seen in a long time. I mean, I swear, I thought it was, I hope this guy does better than Glacier. I mean, for months we've been hearing about a star being born tonight at Bound for Glory. We'll find out if there is a payoff. Who's next, Kevin? Tell you, but I think it's the big man from Canada. That's right. Back to false minus. Oh, I guess in the spirit of the X Division, we're going to have A1 come out here. Has A1 ever competed in an X Division match, Don? Uh, not to, to my knowledge, no. As for argument's well, sake, we always say it's not about weight limits. It's about <laughs> no <laughs> limits. And that's, that pretty much just monikers my career. <laughs> Hey, one though, this is a perfect match. 
If he's going to be in an X-Division style match, guys, this is the way A1's going to like it. Cramped quarters with a lot of people in there and just start throwing bodies over the top rope. You're right. This is his chance to show his strength, which is his power game. Use that muscle. Take these smaller wrestlers, toss them over the top rope down to the arena floor. Jay Lethal fighting for his life in the far corner. Lethal hanging on here. As you see there, the wide shot. Maverick Matt putting the boots to Sanjay Dutt. Countdown in place. I know Kevin Nash has got another competitor in line. Oh, here we go. Is that who I think it is? What? Zach Gowan? Zach Gowan? Zach Gowan? We haven't seen Zach Gowan in TNA for ages. And for those of you that don't know him, the reason he comes in with a, a cane and a limp is, believe it or not, this man has... One leg, as a prosthetic leg is coming down with that he will remove it before he goes into the action. Yeah, you gotta give me credit. At least I got the right one leg to wrestle. So I take it, Zach, your ace in the hole? Ah. Oh, my God. That was dynamic, you two dudes. <laughs> <laughs> and for, look at Zach okay, Gowan. Look at this. this. One leg. From the top. Oh. Moonsaults back and crashes down. Sanjay Dutt. What an incredible human interest story oh. it is. He immediately gets taken down with a clothesline by Austin Starr. This, Austin this Star kid, Shadows. this kid Zach Gavin yeah. lost his leg as a youngster because of cancer. Always wanted to be a professional wrestler. He persevered and he's in the Kevin Nash Open Invitational. And I'm proud to have him. It's coming up Kevin next. Kruzler, wow. Well, that's a good choice. Bringing the X Division back and I'm going to tell you something what I like about it is, is Nobody's been eliminated yet. Wait a minute. Oh. As I say that, who was that? That was Sanjay, Sanjay wasn't it? Sanjay Dutt is gone. Sanjay Dutt has been eliminated. And meanwhile, Jay Lethal hanging on for dear life while A1 and Zach Gowan try and take him over the top rope and down to the floor. Man, uh, Jay Lethal had his arms hooked around that rope for dear life and hung on somehow to keep from going around. You gotta wonder about Zach, what kind of leverage he's gonna have when somebody gets him up there on top of the rope. It's he's gonna be a, he's, he's, he's kinda like a spider monkey on those, oh. those ropes. Kinda like you back in the day. Yeah. Back yeah. in the day. What day? Wednesday. Ten, nine, Countdown eight, clock in place. Seven. Action continues in the six-sided ring. We're gonna find out who's next. Ah, see? Equal opportunity employer. Oh, man. Yes. That's right. Sorelda? That's nimble. Well, think about it. She was with two of the greatest sex division athletes in the world. And AJ Styles and Chris oh, Daniels. He just smacked her right in the mouth. Well, if she's going to hit her the ring, can you do that? Then she's going to have to take what's coming to her. And look at Sorelda go on the offense. Kazari fired off into the ropes. Takes him out. Oh. Oh, side slam back first to the canvas. Whoa, what a shot there by Austin Starr. Whoa, she just cracked him right back, didn't back down. Oh, oh mama. <laughs> Inverted atomic drop for Austin Starr. Sorelda going to go for the clothesline. He was able to duck under it. Standing switch out of the full Nelson. Sorelda. Oh. oh. Now, that, that shouldn't have any effect, the low blow. What do you call that? Oh, oh. taken out by A1. Oh, man. Vicious oh. leap of clothesline. And then A1 follows, and then he's immediately Got your money on Sharky? I got my money on the Shark one. Over Alex Shelley? I mean, that's the question. I mean, come on. The alignment that we've seen here for months in TNA, the way we've seen you and Alex Shelley, it's almost as if you've taken Shelley under your wing as, as part of this paparazzi production. I see a lot of talent in that young man. He's, a, he's, a, he's, he's probably the biggest star in TNA, besides me. I will admit, we see, we saw so much personality come out of Alex Shelley once he aligned himself with you. And I will admit, I think what you've done for him, especially confidence-wise, if I can say this, has been commendable. Yeah, and I mean, Don, we've always talked about how Alex Shelley has so much raw talent. He does. And Kevin Nash has been there to give him that extra hype, that extra push, that extra pump. Five, yeah. Four, Just do tell three, him. Kevin Nash, the role model. And here he comes! Oh. It's over. You know, I'm actually surprised. I would think that in the Kevin Nash Open Invitational X Division Gauntlet Battle Royal, that you would have Alex Shelley come out here last, and he just hit a cross body block, took out both Jay Lethal and Kazarian. Well, you know, I think this is fake. I mean, yeah, it's a fake match. You do that. The Michigan Commission told me I had to do this up and up. 
Ah, the State Athletic Commission stepped yes. in. Yeah, I was going to have them come out last. I said, no, we're not doing that. That's the professional you are. You make sure you've got all your, your T's crossed and I's dotted before oh. you start up. Oh. I got have a mask. I got, I, got, I, got, I, got, I, got, I got an extra six paramedics here tonight because of this. And I'm picking up that guy. Uh-oh. Zach Gowan did his feet. No, did, his, he hung did, his, on. did his foot touch? No, no, he hung on. Spider monkey. Shoulder block by Zach. Five, Countdown clock shows four, we're under five for the next three, competitor. Oh. oh my gosh, the favorite! Ladies and gentlemen, the twister is D-Ray! D-Ray Now you've been watching some old TNA DVDs, haven't you? I actually thought that was Gus Govan from the Utah Stars that just came back. Ah, dated ABA <laughs> reference, by the way. Oh, human from the Indiana Bay. Yeah, Dr. Dunk, I know, for those of you scoring at home. Old ABA, American Basketball Association references. Check out Sharky here. Oh, there oh, it nice. is. Do you know what that is? That's the Fro Ram. The hand Fro Ram lays them out, and these guys were tag oh. team partners back in the day. And let me tell you something, they work it to perfection. Is everybody has to feel the pro. Now the fact that they were Oh Maverick oh, Cat eliminated. The fact, that they were, oh, over. the fact that they were the ex champion, I mean ex attack partners has got to go to their advantage. It's got to. And it just shows as they as they eliminate. Built in advantage Ten, for Sharp nine, Boy and D Ray. Eight, We've always seven, questioned their, six, their ability to communicate five, together, four, but they seem to work three, hand in hand. Two, you know the shark one. does that thing with the whole, you know, the hearing and everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Dubai! Here's another guy you've worked closely with yes, in the past. Yes, up and cover. Well, you did oh. stack the deck a little bit in terms of Johnny Divine coming out late in this matchup. Oh. a member of Paparazzi. Oh! Zach oh. Gallon just fell to the floor. Is he out? He's eliminated. He's, eliminated. He's, He's out. Gallon has been eliminated. I'll tell you one thing. You won't see Kazarian working with Maverick Madness. He's been eliminated. Sanjay Dutch's been eliminated. Sorelda's been eliminated. Zach Gallon's been eliminated. And you know what? I just thought about this, guys. Austin Starr, he's still in there. Austin Starr, who's been there from the start. A1's been eliminated. Austin Starr, you know what? And Austin Starr is living up to his advanced height. You know, Austin Starr kind of looks like all those guys that you said were his idol. He reminds me of Rude. Five, <laughs> he looks like Rude. Now, we talked three, about that earlier. Two, we'll concentrate one, on Austin Starr after we find out who's next. Oh. We're going prime time in the Motor City. Here comes Elix Skipper as the next competitor in the Open Invitational. A Shizzle. Former, a former tag team oh. champion. Who will forget him walking the steel cage? And look at him. You said it, Kevin. He's chiseled. Look at the karate kicks going right at Johnny Devine. That kick caught Devine right in the gut. Doubled him over. Now Skipper going to spring up middle of the top. Down on Johnny Devine. That was beautiful. High risk. Austin Starr just crashed and burned in the corner. Great overhead shot of the action. Oh. Oh, speaking of crashing and burning, Crash that's burn. the skipper oh. to Kazarian Rock. He's yeah. out. Man, he went up high risk and he paid for it, guys. You know how dangerous it can be when you get up on that top oh, rope I'm like telling, that. You know, it, that's why my knees are so bad. As you can see, Skipper Five, with the fall four, off the top rope with three, the injury. Knee. Most of my injuries Whoa. were uh, due to that top rope activity. All right. Short sleeve Samson. And look at referee Slick Johnson encouraging his little buddy to get in the ring. Now this makes it officially oh. a Kevin Nash. Open invitation. That's right. Oh, look at this. This guy's he's on. Short boy's knocked out, guys. He is out cold. Short boy has been eliminated. It was laid out, guys. I told you with last. If you see, look at there. Short sleeve Sampson came up. Sorry, but just a little short coming off that middle oh. rope. You can see Austin, Austin Starr's Star. got him up. What's he gonna do with him? He's toying with him. Oh, he's playing with him right now. I love him on that Geico commercial. What's the deal with the fans around ringside? That's not mini me. Oh. Fans are on ringside inviting Austin Starr to send short sleeve Samson Five, their way. Four, three, he gets out two, toying one. with him right now is coming out. The next participant in this match is Corbin Smiley. <laughs> and check out that uniform. That's the hometown Plymouth Whalers here in Plymouth, Michigan, here in suburban Detroit. You can see right there, Norman Smiley comes right out to help short sleeve Samson. Oh, look at this. You've got Johnny Devine and Alex Shelley Bones up against the ropes. Are we going to see a double wiggle? 
I don't know. You don't think. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. Smiley and Samson both. Look at this. There it is. Any comments, Mr. Dash? I think I watched that same thing this morning in my, no, in no, my room. No, 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 no. Oh! 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 oh, man. Just as Short Boy was trying to get up, Alex Shelley threw Short Sleeve Samson right on top of him and knocked him back out again. Yeah, referee Andrew Look at Thomas this. down. And wait a minute, Slick like Johnson. A trilogy of terror. Getting right in the face of Short Sleeve Samson. And look at this, Slick being chased around the ring. Uh oh. And now Slick Johnson tries to the middle of the ring. Here comes Petey Williams. This is it, right? This is the 16th and final competitor. This is it. In the Kevin Nash Open Invitational. Unless you don't want to hit the ring. No, I'll stay right here, thank you. Mike? What is Slick Johnson doing in there? Oh, he oh looks, Elix. Dipper's gone. Norman so, Smiley, I believe, is going. What, Slick? I, I mean, I guess it's an Open Invitational, but Slick that's, Johnson? That's in the in the truest essence of what this is all about. Well, that's how quickly a referee can get eliminated. As Petey Williams doesn't even give him a chance. Oh. Alex Shelley off the top. Come on, Alex. Paid for that. Uh oh, could be Canadian Destroyer. Listen to this crowd. They're ready for more. Oh. Johnny Divine comes in to break it up. Oh, very fortunately for work. Shelley, the Divine work, saved his bacon right there. Petey Williams goes up there. Jay Lethal. Petey looks in excellent shape. Oh, look at that. Oh. He's, He's right in the chest. Springs in, catches it. Here he goes. Double knees. Here comes the Destroyer. Look out below! Oh, that's oh. so wicked, man! That thing is sick! What wow. a flip pile driver by Petey Williams, and what a reaction by the crowd here in Detroit! I thought of that. Listen to this place, it is deafening! That destroys my mood. Wait a minute, and just as quick, Petey Williams eliminated, I believe, by Alex Shelley! You, well, can't, you just can't blink in this match! Man, you've got to love what you see out there right now, Kevin, as your two former protégés. Johnny Devine and Alex Shelley being able oh, to work together. There goes one of them out. Austin Starr, yep, talked about all those influences earlier. Everybody from Jesse Ventura to the Grand Wizard and gosh, Randy Savage and the superstar Billy Graham in between. Look at the leg from outside by Johnny Devine on Austin Starr. Here comes Shelley. Oh! Alex Shelley has been eliminated. Alex Shelley's gone. Is it now? Austin Starr prancing in the ring. Yeah, Dan, you saw that with the two. Something that, that uh -oh. look at this, and you can see how they're some words at each other. Oh. Ringside. Jay Lethal, full Nelson overpin, and no. Got it. just in time to get his from the ropes right there. See, the, ref, the referee now is in this matchup. We're down to the final two competitors. It's pinfall or submission decided. Who's going to get the bowling trophy? Think about this. Amazing. Austin Starr has stayed in there from the very beginning. Very resilient. The first one that was announced, and he's still alive. And how about Alex Shelley and Johnny Devine of the paparazzi? They're on the outside looking in, Kevin. And they're still arguing with each other. Oh, that's great. Do they get small bowling trophies? Uh, here we go to the final here as the two are left. Star going to take him up. Oh, oh that's just wicked. Oh, brain buster pin. Three count. He's got the win. What a debut. Oh, I'm going down the ringside. Unbelievable shot right there, Mike. That star buster. Holy cow. That was wicked to get the pin. We have been hearing the hype for months about Austin Star. The fact that Austin Star was coming to TNA to make his debut at Bound for Glory. And you know what? All the hype, all the pub was right on the money because the star is born tonight at Bound for Glory. Kevin Nash has got the folding trophy in his head. Yeah, well, he's got to award him as a winner. It wasn't Alex Shelley, who I think he secretly had planned. You see Alex Shelley right there beating Kevin Nash at the top of the rope. But Austin Star, what a finishing move that was, Mike. And to last from the very beginning, you've got to give him the prop. And look at this, Kevin Nash just kind of shunning Alex Shelley. Hey, you didn't get the job done. And look at the love he's given off. Almost as if he just turned his back there on Alex Shelley. Oh, he wants to be associated with a winner. I mean, let's face it, this is the Kevin Nash. The Bound for Glory Kevin Nash open invitation. Let's make it call the Battle Royal. And there's the trophy presentation to the winner. That is a bowler on top of that thing. He outlasted everybody. He was the first man in. And yes, he is the victor here at Bound for Glory as Austin Starr is victorious.
Look at that look of jealousy on the face of Alex Shelley as he's congratulated by Nash. This past week on Impact, you got to check out this wild situation. LAX, AMW, and Gail Kim. Oh my God! Conan just came in and pie faced Gail Kim. What the hell is he doing? You can see Gail Kim though standing up to him. You got him oh, up, just oh. slapped him across the face. He just turned the dogs loose, and Conan with that slap jab. Oh, he took out both Harris and Storm. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Take your hands off that woman. No way. Not the border dog. No. What? No. 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 My God, what have we just witnessed here? Certainly some disturbing footage there from this last week's impact. Gail Kim not able to be here tonight at Bound for Glory, but gentlemen, you got to look past that. You're about to enter a four-way tag team battle here at Bound for Glory. No disrespect to any of the teams, 3D, the Naturals, the James Gang. No disrespect to them. This is going to be one more night that we can prove that we're the best. But you want us to look past this? <laughs> JB, you know us and you know our attitude. We are not about to look past what LAX has done to Gail Kim. There's a missing piece to AMW on the greatest night in TNA history. And we are not about to let you guys get away with this. The way you had took that poor, innocent, 110-pound girl, launched her in the air, folded her up like an accordion, I don't even see how you guys can call yourselves men. Whoa, brother, have a drink, calm down. Because you know what, LAX, he's right. We don't know how they let people like you in my country, in our country, the good old U.S. of A. But you know what? While you're here, we might as well be the new Border Patrol because we're going to kick the living dog snot out of you. Believe me, you have a big match tonight with the tag team belts. Belts or no belts. <laughs> your ass whooping might be coming a little sooner than what you think. <laughs> Sorry about your damn luck. We're back live in Detroit. We're back live at Bound for Glory. And check out who's headed to the six-sided ring. It's the man behind the Naturals. It's the franchise, Shane Douglas. And here he is soaking it in from the crowd as the man who heads up the Naturals. We're going to hear from him here, Mike. Detroit Rock City! Are you ready to get your asses franchised? Then cut the damn music! They call me the franchise Shane Douglas! And it's my privilege to come to you at Bound for Glory to introduce the number one contenders for the NWA Tag Team Titles. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Chase Stevens, Andy Douglas, the newly franchised Naturals. One thing we know, DW, the Naturals Tag Team of the franchise Shane Douglas, yes, they are in line for what we hear is an imminent shot at the NWA World Tag Team Championship belts. And by God, they've earned it. Well, they have earned it. The last time they did it, it was in a, it was kind of in a battle royal of its own, the way they won that shot, and they earned it with the franchise that kind of dressed them down. But this is a team right now that's going to have to face three of the best tag teams in the tag team division here at TNA, Mike. Four-way tag team matchup in Bound for Glory. Ladies and gentlemen, the second team in this four-way contest won by capturing Nobody the first hurt. pinfaller submission. Get James, BG James, they are the James Gang! Have you been surprised as I have over the course of the past two weeks on Impact? Detroit, Michigan! For the comments from BG you James as we see right. that he's got the microphone. Oh, hell yeah! Here. I don't want to interrupt BG James because the last time he spoke, it, it kind of blew us away when he defended Jeff Jarrett like he did. And I think that's what you were talking about when he was coming down. What I was trying to get to, BG in one corner, Kim in the other. The James game, yep, they're ready for this four-way tag team matchup. They seem to be on the same page. Welcome! to Leland's Lair! Cut 
the music. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, tonight, Total Nonstop Action proudly brings to you its next NWA Tag Team Champions of the World! I'm that B to the G to the Jizzle, microphone sizzle, K-I to the Pizzle. You gotta catch us if you want us to hang, cause together we are the James Gang, bitch! Got the Tigers cap on, referring to Leland's lair, Jim Leland, the manager of the Detroit Tigers. Well, it's a great way to pay respect to a great manager in a great town, but coming up is gonna be a, another tag team that may be known when it's all said and done as the greatest tag team in TNA history. Ladies and gentlemen, team number three, Cowboys, James Storm, Wolfpack, Chris Harris, they are America's Boots Wanted! And when you think of those seven titles, Mike, you've got to give them that respect. And conspicuous by her absence, the injured Gail Kim, and we heard Harris and Storm refer to that in the pre-match interview with JB in the back. What an emotional outburst from Chris Harris. I think it's putting it lightly to say that AMW, they're PO'd in LAX. And the final team in this contest from New York City, Brother Ray and Brother Devon, they are Team Green Team! You talked about how much America's Most Wanted has accomplished here in TNA. Has there ever been a tag team that has accomplished as much as Brother Ray and Brother Devon outside of TNA? But there's one thing that they haven't accomplished on, and that's the NWA World Tag Team Championship belts having them around their waist. You know, think about that as we're going to hear from Brother Ray as he's got a microphone. Okay, Detroit! You wanted the best! You got the best! The baddest tag team on the planet! Team 3 D. Getting the crowd behind him there as he Throws the mic to kick game. I got game. two words for that. Suck it! Think about these four great tag teams. Right here, when you look around there, you see the Naturals who've been tag team champs a couple of times at TNA. As you see the franchise walking up the ramp, which he likes to do to let the Naturals concentrate on the task at hand and not worry about him ringside. Listen to this reaction here in Detroit, chanting for 3D. And think about what Brother Ray had to say recently on Impact. He talked about how both he and Devon had taken some time off from TNA. They've reassessed the situation here in Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, and they have decided, Don, that they are going to start at the bottom. They're going to work their way right up to the top, and they know in their minds, they know in their hearts, and Brother Ray came and talked to both you and I today, up close and personal, face to face, they realized, Don, that they are eventually going to be NWA World Tag Team Champions. Brother Ray thinks it's their destiny. Well, you win a match like this and nobody can ignore you. Hey, did you notice when Brother Ray was talking to us, Mike? Normally this is a, a jovial person. He's always cutting up, always doing pranks. I've never seen him so serious. It's like he had one thing in mind, and that was coming out here and absolutely blowing everybody away and letting them know just how much Team 3D is focused and ready to make a run here in TNA. Talk about focus. Check Look out these that. moves. Oh, he has tunnel vision, all right. And he is totally focused on he and Devon gaining the NWA Tag Team titles. It's first pin, first submission to win this four-way tag team matchup. And I would think that Jim Cornette, TNA management as well, they're going to be looking at the winners of this tag team match, Don, to consider the tag team rankings. And we know that later tonight, we'll find out who leaves bound for glory as the tag team title holders are going to be. LAX is going to be Styles and Daniels. Well, you can see right here, and look at this, Brother Ray and BT James working together. Yeah. And that's going to be the respect they have for each other for all the years that they've dominated in the tag team division. Mutual respect with the mirror images from these two longtime tag teams. But how long is that going to last? Oh, about two seconds, as you can see right there. Both of them thought they'd catch the other one off guard, and it was just one shot at the same time simultaneously. And now you can see uh, here Brother Devon and Kip James going at each other to defend 
They're partners. It is a jam-packed Compuware oh, Arena here in Detroit. Down. Do you see an empty seat in this building? I sure don't. Their people are still coming in, and they're standing up at top right now as right there, BG James sends up Brother Devon. Brother Ray sends out Kip James, and now the Naturals that have just kind of been staying out of everybody's view. But nice kick right there by James Storm that puts Brother Ray out. Oh, it has broken down. Here at Bound for Glory, bodies in action all over the place. There was a low blow there in the corner. Storm fighting off. Chase Stevens, Storm hooked up in the corner now. Oh, look at right here, as you can see, AMW working together as Wildcat Chris Harris sees Storm's in trouble, goes up to the top, gives an elbow to Andy Douglas, and now you see Chase Stevens get into the mix. All four of them, and there they go. show you a replay of this. Let's take the it out. Of doom. Look at that. Wow. And Storm is still stuck on the ropes, Mike. His legs are still stuck on the ropes and he's hanging upside down. As right now, the Wildcat trying to do the catatonic. No, he can't quite get it to BG James. And BG James able to get out of it. And then the kick to the gut. Here comes the pump hand. And he nails it, Mike. Perfect. Powers him right down. Suck it. Uh-oh, here comes from behind. Yes, Chase Stevens of the Naturals. Tried to go for that cutter, BG able to fight him up. Didn't fight off the clothesline, just dropped him right in his tracks. Trying to bust him with the knee, BG able to keep his head from having a hit, but now look at Storm, he's now off the ropes, and here goes the eye of the storm. Oh, it's, it's Chase Stevens whirling through the air. Whirly bird style, pounded him down. Here comes Brother Devon in. And power, Brother Devon, so strong. When you think of all the things he's done in all the <laughs> titles that he's won, but man alive, Andy Douglas just nails him. <laughs> Look at this, and then Brother Ray going again. Brother Ray fired up, but Kip James is behind him and he doesn't see it. Oh, caught him with that boot right in the gut. Here comes Kip James. Drilled him from behind, and now, uh oh, there goes the Wildcat, Chris Harrison. Kip James sent out to the floor, pin in the ring, two count only. Wow, Chase Stevens almost had the pin right there on Brother Ray as he's looking at the referee thing. Now you see the fight breaking out between BG James and James Storm over there, and it's just become a melee outside of the ring. You're right, Don. Action all over the building here in Detroit. Meanwhile, we've got a shot in the ring up in the corner. Devon, oh, just cut off there by Chase Stevens. Chase Stevens right here has got Brother Devon. In a spot, but he got he's got to do it quick, and there's brother right, right behind him, and oh man, he had to do it fast, and now it's he is set up, up on the shoulders. Here comes Devon with the clothesline. Team 3D, you cannot give him an opportunity like that. Now their attention, it's turned to the Naturals. Yes, Andy Douglas caught and powered down with the slam. Just scooped him and slammed him right down, and now brother Devon, oh no, he's got it set up for the perfectly placed headbutt. Here it comes. Whoa. Look out below. That hurts. Up around like a fish. Great reaction here to Team 3D at Bound for Glory. Brother Ray, Brother Devon standing tall in mid-ring. All oh, the crowd has just been behind him from the start. Do you hear what they oh. said? Look at Chase oh. Stevens, though, with the double drop kick. Played to the crowd, talked about the tables. Never saw Chase Stevens with that drop kick from out of nowhere. What a great weekend it has been here in Detroit. Fan Fest was awesome yesterday. Double team move, natural disaster. Oh, they hit it. They hit it. They've got Devon one, two, the natural. The oh, no. Brother Devon able to get the shoulder up. Wow, I don't think. Jay Stevens can believe it as he looks at referee Rudy Charles. It was so close to having the pin. He had the natural disaster right there. But Brother Devon able to get the solo, gets out of the way. And Andy Douglas nails his partner with the knee. Here it comes. Oh, the 3D. Pin count two. Done. Ladies and gentlemen, your winners, Team 3D. It's a great way to return to TNA and a great pay per view event here Bound for glory. They've been back on impact for several weeks. They get a great pay-per-view win, and you know that the franchise, Shane Douglas, he's not going to be happy about this situation in spite of the fact that his Nationals are in line for a tag shot. They've already earned that. Oh, they have, but, but 
Think about the, long, the long history here between the franchise Shane Douglas and Team 3D, and you're seeing that mutual respect as 3D allows the franchise to make its way to Stevenson Douglas. Good point right there, Mike. They can see the expression on his face, and now look at it. Franchise is just absolutely pressing down at him, Douglas, and he claps Jay Stevens. I mean, Jay Douglas is absolutely pissed off like I've never seen it. No question, he's right in their faces. We're gonna go to JB backstage. Yeah, trying to get a word with Samoa Joe. I am standing outside of Samoa Joe's locker room. Still have not heard anything from him in regards to what went down earlier tonight at Kurt Angle. He's not saying a word. I'm guessing tonight at the Monsters Ball, he's gonna take this opportunity to let his actions speak louder than... Oh, God. Do you, do you really want to see the snake? Why are you wondering? It's like surprises. Yeah, you like a surprise? I mean, if you have, to, if you really want to, I can get the snake and let you hold it, but I'll tell you this, my man. Sometimes when you hold a snake and you treat it real nice, it does seem to uh, grow a little bit, maybe a little bigger than life. Some more Joe, he just needs to be ready to do his thing in the ring. All four men, just do it in the ring. We don't need to talk about things like this. I mean, after all, you have me for a referee, not a referee, a guide. I don't like stripes, remember that. A guide, basically just to check the pulse to see who's still living and who's not. Because the winner's the one that's left standing. We both know that. And uh, what better man to have in a match where there's no rules just to check things out? Trust me, expect the unexpected. As far as the snake, if you really want to, I'll make damn sure you see him. If I can promise you that the Monster Abyss will take the NWA belt away from Samoa Joe and deliver it to you, can you promise the Monster Abyss the first world title shot after Bound for Glory? <laughs> you got a deal. Samoa Joe, why do you have the NWA World Heavyweight Championship? Why have you stolen the belt? Why? Are you holding it hostage? At Bound for Glory, the man who wins this belt, I'll hand it back to you on one condition. You give me and what all the TNA fans around the world want, a Samoa Joe heavyweight title shot. He's not respecting us. He's not respecting us. He's offering up to the NWA title. Samoa Joe, yes, he has possession of Jeff Jarrett's NWA world heavyweight title belt, but is he concentrating on that so much? You don't think he's going to overlook Monster's ball, do you? Wow! Referee, but I will be the guide that takes you to the labyrinth in your mind. Raven, a maniacal evil genius, a puppet master of pain, a man who feasts on the anguish of others. Runt, a fearless warrior, no opponent too big, no risk too great. Abyss, the six foot eight weapon of mass destruction, a monster specializing in the unleashing of violence. Samoa Joe, the undefeated Samoan submission machine, a ground and pound fighting warrior. Tonight, led by a disturbed madman, they have a date with destruction. TNA Wrestling now presents the signature match of no rules warfare, the Monsters Ball. And it's up next in Bound for Glory. Get ready for Monsters Ball. Brother Run, Raven, the Monster Abyss, and yes, the undefeated Samoa Joe. We're going to turn them loose now. Ladies and gentlemen, TNA's Bound for Glory continues with the Monsters Ball. In this no disqualification match, the winner is the first man to score a pinner submission and introducing your special referee, Jake the Snake Roberts. He talked about surprises. He said, expect the unexpected. And check this out, much like on Impact, Jake Roberts headed to the ring. He's got that bag on and we know what's inside. He's almost the perfect person when you think about these four people that are going to be in Monsters Ball. Why not take the Snake Roberts as, like he said, the special guy? The first participant, accompanied to the ring by James Mitchell. He stands six foot eight inches tall and weighs 350 pounds. The Monster Robert! Feet eight, 350 pounds of a monster.
monster on the loose. He's certainly, Don, the biggest competitor in this four-way Monsters Ball matchup. Add in, yes, James Mitchell accompanying him to the ring. And boy, the Monster Abyss, he's going to be difficult to beat tonight. Well, it wouldn't be a Monster Ball without the Monster Abyss in it. I mean, he's just perfect for these kind of matches. But the last time when that snake came out of the bag and did the snake Robert Dead, we saw a fear in Abyss as he couldn't get out of that ring fast enough. You're gonna have to wonder how that's gonna play in this match. And you just saw him put on the brakes right there as he was coming down the entrance ramp. The second participant in Monsters Ball from New York City, Brother Runt. We just talked about how big the monster of this is at 6'8", 350 pounds. Well, there's no question yet that, that Brother Run is the smallest of the competitors in this Monsters Ball match. But when you take into account the size of his heart, I just heard in that package, they called him the fearless warrior. What, could there be a better description than that? He's fearless, but sometimes you have to wonder if he even, if he even thinks about the you know, old match man. like this monster ball and the possible ramifications. The next competitor, Bongo Perry, Raven! You know, you were talking, Mike, about the craziness, and look at this, and Raven. Something right out of the movies right there. I was gonna say almost like a Hannibal Lecter yeah, style match. That's a Hannibal Lecter. Well, you've gotta have that mindset though. And you know, you talk about Brother Rutt and how crazy he is. Is there anybody more diabolical? Is there anybody that uses his mind in more devious ways than Raven? Here's a guy who is so intelligent, we know that. Yeah, but he, yeah he's he'll not tell a, you also. Oh yeah, he'll tell you, but he's not afraid to put his body on the line any way, shape, or form, and he'll do it here in this match. Time for the introduction of, yes, the fourth and final competitor in the Monsters Ball. And the final participant in Monsters Ball is the undefeated Samoan Submission Machine, Support Joe! I've got to see how this works out. You see the tape over the eyebrow right there of Samoa Joe. Yes, still sporting. That cut the forehead from that incredible Kurt Angle headbutt this week on Impact. So we have to talk about Abyss, Grunt, and Raven. Raven, the heat that they've had with Samoa Joe, it's almost as if they feel like he dissed them. He disrespected them and the Monsters Ball because of all of his focus on the NWA World's Heavyweight title belt that he's had possession of for the past several weeks. Oh, it's not like Raven and the Monster Abyss. And, and Brother Run like each other, but you better respect what they do. And right away, they work together to show Samoa Joe, hey, you won't disrespect us. They go right to him, send him out of the ring, and now they do the task at hand. And, and I think it's a good message sent by Raven. And you brought it up, we've got to be wondering what's going on in the mind of Samoa Joe. I mean, nothing but turn angle to him ever since that headbutt. And he better focus on a match like this, because let me tell you something. Those three will make it pay if he's not ready for what can happen in us. Abyss set up into the ropes, the drop pull hold by Raven. Face first goes Abyss into the chair momentarily. Now Brother Rutt and Raven working together. And then, yes, it's the epitome of evil as the referee in this match, Jake Roberts. He's gonna, I don't think he's even gonna try and control what they do in there, Don. I think he's just there to raise the hand of the winner. Here comes Joe like a freight train in the corner. Caught him with that big forearm shot, Brother Rutt first. that they did, I think, by attacking Joe right from the start was just kick him off. I mean, if they were worried about where his head was, they got him <laughs> right back into the game. But I mean, that's what Joe is. Yeah, he may have been thinking about Kurt Angle this afternoon, but right now, all he's thinking about is destroying everybody else in the ring. Face wash in the corner repeatedly, but then as he turns around, the monster abyss takes him high up into the air and throws him right down to the canvas with the choke slam. Too close to the ropes here for Jake Roberts to even attempt a pin. Yeah, there's no disqualification in this match. Bottom line, there's no rules. Bring your weapons, whatever you want. But yeah, it's the first pin is sufficient to win it. Abyss had both Raven and Brother Run Diesel. Caught Raven with the clothesline. Going to take Run up. Oh, man, high into the air. And they just drove him right down to the mat. Well, Brother Run was able to duck the clothesline, but all it did was bring him right back to the power. Look at this! This 
risk is clothesline from Raven. Oh my God, look at Raven, high risk. He goes right over the top of the fist, still able to stay on his feet. As you can see, Jake the Snake Roberts trying to get people back into the ring. Joe now getting to his feet for the run. Outside Raven, all the way. Wait a minute, here comes Joe. Splash. 
Abyss, but no, the Monster Abyss able to roll out of the way, and now Abyss has picked up a chair. And nobody can stop him from using it right there. I don't know that Joe knows he has it. He does now, and he, oh, he kicks him right there in the crotch. And that'll make you drop a chair in a hurry. No disqualification, purposeful low blow by Samoa Joe. He chops to the side of the neck. Oh, and then what a slap as he just wound up and caught Abyss on the side of the head. Nice kick right there by Abyss. Now he comes back, and oh! for the pin, Raven in, no, just a two count, says Jake. What a snap slam that was by Samoa Joe on a 350 pound monster. And you know, it never, it just never ceases to amaze me what Joe can do. Think about, oh, nice drop, oh, oh, oh my. by Raven, and he just goes flying through the ropes, and Raven baited him into that. Raven set him up for that, and Joe bit, and that shows you how smart some of the experience of Raven can be. And Joe went for it, and they cost him as he's out of the ring. Oh, what a great point. You're right. He never saw that one coming. One of the patented moves of Raven. Now, Abyss standing alone in the ring. James Mitchell, we talked about how, yes, weapons, yeah, they're allowed. And, yeah, this is the signature weapon of the Monster Abyss. Check out that bag. How many are in there, Don? Thousands of thumbtacks. Thousands in the crowd knows exactly what it is as they go absolutely crazy. Wait a minute. Jake the Snake Roberts has a bag of his own, and it's a little bit bigger and a lot more dangerous inside, I think. And you know about the intimidation factor when it comes to the snake and the monster abyss. Now Raven in. Raven and Jake Roberts. Oh, Raven just hit the referee, Jake Roberts. Oh, no, he's going to go for the Raven effect DDT. Oh, man. Buster Fist yeah. takes them both out. Jake Roberts and Raven were both clocked by that charging monster. Well, he wasn't able to get the the bag open there to get the snake out of it and you can see right here abyss winding through his and while he's taking his time raven able to get there to his leg but abyss just kicks it right back off and now here comes abyss he's got the bag opened up here come the thousands of thumbtacks oh god every time i see that i oh. think of somebody getting ready to go into him and we've seen some shots from people in the past the tack sticking into the flesh, and it's just an eerie feeling. Mitchell up on the apron. He says it's doomsday time. He gives the signal to Abyss. Attention turned to Raven. Abyss now going to take Raven. Shoot him off. Oh, oh, did you see that with Joe did? Joe pulled down the rope. He pulled down the ropes, and Raven was flying right through, and he got Raven back that way, and now Joe's got him. So oh, stick to oh. Samoa Joe, and yes, that 280 pounds crashing down right on top of him. There it is. He's got that rear naked choke applied. You can see him choking him out, and Raven right now getting back in, and Brother Rod still everything that's happened to him. We haven't seen him back in the ring. I can't find out where he's laying, and now he's going to tear right there by Raven. And then immediately, Joe tries to go wow. right back to that choke, but Raven just cocks him again with the chair. Wait a minute, Jake Roberts gonna take the chair away from Raven. Oh, Raven's now the target of his 
Anger, and there he goes! Oh, no. He puts it right on top of Raven, he's freaking out! Look at the body of Raven, just quivering as the snake winds and wraps it all the way around his body, that's sick! Oh, that gives me the creeps, man! Look at the size of that python as he holds it up right there! Take the snake! Oh, man! Monster's ball goes to Samoa Joe, to the back, JB and Eric Young! Eric, you okay? Yeah, fine, fine. Are you sure, Eric? You sure, okay? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Big, big night tonight here. The biggest, Jeremy Boras, bound for glory. If I win tonight, I get to stay. My dreams, my career, I get to keep it all intact. But if I lose, what if I lose, Jeremy Boras? What am I? Eric, you can't think like that. There's no losing. You gotta have confidence, man. Confidence. You're right. You're right. Confidence. Confidence is important. But what if I lose? Yeah, there you are, you nit. Well, let me tell you something, Eric Young. You don't have confidence. And even if you did, you couldn't beat me with it. You need ability. You need knowledge. You need experience. And you don't have any of it. Look at you. You're insecure. You're a nervous wreck. I've already got you beat. I wipe my snot with punks like you, kid. I should beat you right now. But Coronet's not going to have anything to use against me. You're out of here. See you in Larry Land, you nitwit. Confidence, Eric. Confidence. Abuse of power. A track record of corruption. Larry Zabisco has wielded his sword as an untouchable political force. A political force that has cost a man his job. Everybody in the world wants to wrestle here, but if people are coming, then somebody's got to go. So that's why you guys tonight are in a match. The loser loses his job. Try and roll up here. Wait a minute. Oh. So, Dubisco down here with a golf club. He hit him right in the gut with a no. golf club. No. What? No. Ladies and gentlemen, the Young Eric Young is fired. Look how sad he is. Eric Young's been fired. All because of Larry Zabisco. Now, only one man can do something about it. I can book you in a match with any rules that I deem necessary. So, you at Bound for Glory, one on one with Eric Young, and the rules, the rules that I deem necessary, the loser of that match, that's the guy that loses his job. You've lost your mind, Twin, and you can't do any of that. I just did it. See what you lose. Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a one-fall contest where the loser of the match gets fired from TNA. Introducing first from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, he is a member of the championship committee, the living legend, Larry Zabisco. I guess this is a matchup where the loser either gets fired or stays fired. Here comes Larry Zabisco. Yes, you talk about corruption. You talk about abuse of power. Well, this is nice to see that Larry's hair is growing out after losing his hair several months back on on a TNA pay-per-view to Raven. You know, I look at Larry Zabisco, and I got some thoughts on that here in a minute, Mike. I want to tell you about what's going through Larry's mind in this match. And his opponent now residing in an undisclosed location. Showtime! Here Young! Mike, if we see Eric Young coming down, I can't just jump out oh of boy. his skin every Almost. time Pyro goes off. Almost had the big one there. <laughs> Did he? But he feeds off this crowd, and this crowd is so behind him with the don't fire Eric Young. But I'm looking for a bit for that ring, and here's somebody that had power. And yes, he abused it. And since TNA management Jim Cornette came into town, Larry Zabisco is fading away as far as having power. And this is a chance for him to get some revenge, to take it out on somebody, to take it out on the ring. And Eric Young is almost perfect when you think about that. Someone as paranoid as he is. Larry Zabisco, I think, is going to be awful dangerous in a match like this today. Let's tell it like it is. Larry Zabisco screwed Eric Young. You hit him with that ball oh, club recently on Impact, causing him to lose a match. I mean, there's no secret here in TNA, Don. So many people looking to come to TNA. Yeah, they're chanting, don't fire Eric. Oh, they're standing here at the Copyware Arena in Detroit for Eric Young. So many people want to come to TNA, Don, as a result. There's going to be some roster cuts. Jim Cornette has said that. 
Eric Young, yes, he lost a match, a gut check style match because of Zabisco. Chance to get his job back here and in the process, eliminate a big headache for everybody. Larry Zabisco from the championship committee. And you know, Mike, once you get fired here, the, the, the odds of coming back with so many people lined up ready to come in are very, very small. And that's why the, the last thing you want is to be sent away because this is, you know, the word is out. The people are calling every single day we talk and hear about someone else trying to get the DNA. And I'm telling you, you can't lose your spot. So this is so important for Eric Young in so many ways. And getting that second chance after Jim Cornette realized it was Larry Zabisco that caused him that loss, he better not blow it this time. It's sort of one of those taste great, less filling moments. We had the crowd earlier with Don't Fire Eric, followed up by, yes, Fire Larry, getting under the skin of the living legend, Larry Zabisco. And of course, Larry, yep, he's been known to, well, try and get in his opponent's mind by going through, let's just say, some stalling tactics, if you will. Somebody get the stopwatch ready. <laughs> Have they hooked up yet? No, they haven't hooked up yet. I he's, didn't think so. He's going to play the mental games, as you know he is. Look at Eric Gendo learning. Learning, getting the crowd behind him, and it's absolutely frustrating. Larry Zabisco right there, you can see it. The oh, crowd loving it today. They loved it yesterday at fan oh, interaction. What a great day that was, Mike. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about wrestling fans from all over the world. Don, they were there from, from England. They were there from all over Canada, certainly all over the United States. Bulgaria, kid you not, <laughs> Bulgaria. That's the first time I've ever met wrestling fans from Bulgaria. They're, I mean, it was unbelievable, people that came from all over the world to be here with us, it, it was just incredible. It sure was. If you didn't have a chance to be with us in Detroit yesterday for that great fan interaction, go to our website, TNAWrestling.com, as Zabisco, oh, just caught him unaware, turned around, caught him with that heel kick, boom, right into the midsection, and then goes for the abdominal stretch. He's got him in a perfect place, the middle of the ring, and is Eric Young, he's gonna tap out here, Zabisco applies the pressure. Think about all the high-profile matches that man has been in in his career, this is somebody it's not intimidated by a crowd being against them. And, but look at this, Eric Young turning it around. Reversed it, right, turned it right oh, around. Oh, 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 Zabisco just hit knocked out number three and then hip tossed Eric Young. I mean, we're talking about Larry Zabisco. He wrestled Bruno San Martino at Shea Stadium, for God's sake. You're but, right. Oh, wait, well, see, what's he got there? For uh, an object, I'm not sure if it's brass knuckles or what, but he's got something, some tape wrapped around his hand, swinging a miss. Oh, low blow from EY. Larry down and reeling in pain. Well, the referee still not able to get up as he got smacked into the eyes right there, and he's trying to get See this? Eric Young's got that foreign object. What is that? Enjoy this, Larry. Caught him right in the top of the head. One, two, got it! Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, two-time Eric Young, Larry Zabisco is fired! Wow, able to use the foreign object against Larry. And it caused Larry, he's gonna be wondering what's going through his mind. And he's trying to call a timeout in the middle of the ring. And look at Eric Young go into the crowd. Oh yeah, check this out. The Pied Piper himself, Eric Young with the celebration. This incredible crowd here in Detroit, they're loving it. Eric stays, Larry Zabisco's fired. Bound for glory presented by Mortal Kombat Armageddon. It's a perfect fit for the X Division and Senshi.
Welcome to the biggest event in TNA history. I am sick as a dog. We can hear that. I can hardly talk, but I would have been in intensive care before I would have missed this tonight. <laughs> wow. I think that's how everybody feels. And really, Amen. he has been so sick, and I admire him being out here. You've seen a great show, but you ain't seen nothing yet. The NWA world title match is coming up. And I got one announcement to make, but it's an important one. Everybody knows Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle got problems. That's putting it mildly. This is not the time and this is not the place to settle it. That time will come. However, I am out here to let Samoa Joe know that if he interferes in the world title match in any way, shape, or form right here tonight, he will be removed from the TNA roster effective immediately. I, I, I don't know, Don, but I think that's a good call by Jim Cornette. Samoa Joe, if he interferes, he, he'll be removed from the TNA roster. And, and then the lights went out here in Detroit. Oh, my God! Get this coming out! It's Kurt Angle! Look at this! Now, Jim, I know you were going to give me this big introduction, but I have to admit, I was way too excited because when I heard those fans chanting, when my music started playing, I wanted to come out here and kick some ass. This is exactly why I come to TNA, because this is the best damn audience in the world. TNA, all the way, baby! TNA's the best, screw the rest! <laughs> That's right on the money. And you know what I'm talking about. But let's get down to business. I came out here because I know that I will be the special ringside enforcer for one of the greatest main event matches of all time, Jeff Jarrett versus Sting. And I'm gonna call that match right down the middle because that's my job and that's why I'm here. I respect that. But one thing you don't have to do for me, and I want you to look at my eyes, I don't need a buffer to keep Samoa Joe away from me because if somebody would have came down to that ring and headbutted me and pumped my ass out like I did to him, uh -oh. I would have done the same thing. Uh-oh, not even going to get that sentence finished.
when you hear the music and here he comes. And the look whole Samoa Joe. Look at this. Here they go. He sent a challenge out to Joe and they just go right at it. Security comes right out. You got to respect that. You got too much to stay later. Come on, come on. Angle wasn't going to sit there and let somebody try to be a buffer. Let me hear the Joe, Mike. That's Samoa Joe. He's not going to sit there. to get at each other. The crowd going absolutely crazy trying to figure out and look at him just screaming at each other. And you can see Kareem, he's not afraid he went in. Came in a TNA, the biggest bully from the start. And that's the way you look at it. Look at them just going at it, Joe Boy. Security holding them both apart. Oh, what a wild, what a chaotic situation here at Bound for Glory and TNA security separating Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe. There goes Joe! He's gonna try and break through security! And here he he's goes up the ramp! Through. Joe's on the loose! Joe's on the loose! He's up the ramp! They fed right on the ramp! Oh, this is a fight that you can't stop! 10, 15 guys are out there looking like trying to break it up! Look at this! Pulling them apart! Angle and Joe being momentarily separated oh, by all those big bodies of security! And now they finally got those two separated. Look at the look in Kurt Angle's eye. He just, man, he wants to, to show TNA just who he is and what he's all about. Joe, he feels like he earned that right. All those years here at TNA, not even being pinned, never being, never submitting to anyone. He's not going to take it from Kurt Angle on his side. And what a great shot as we look over the shoulder there momentarily of Jim Cornette from TNA management. You know Cornette, he wanted security to separate these two. I just heard Joe yell, let me fight, let me fight. Let me fight. It's exactly what he said. He said it again to Cornette. And here comes that goddamn Look at this. Look it up again. This is unreal. This is surreal. They don't care right now about anything else that's going on tonight. They just want to get a hold of each other bad. Oh, and security again separates them. I'm just going to say momentarily at this point because we know that they've been able to fight through security. Well, now they finally got Angle taking up the entrance ramp. I think they've got him out of harm's way, and they, they're gonna hold Joe right there on the ramp. I don't think can. Look at that look in Joe's face. Oh, he wants a piece of Angle so bad. Oh, man. What an out of control. What an intense situation here at Bound for Glory. Yesterday at Fan Interaction, fan after fan came up to me, came up to Don West, what did they say, Don? They said, we want to see Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe. They said, we want to turn them loose in TNA. Man, I remember when Samoa Joe kind of got up to speak to the crowd, and all they did was yell Kurt Angle. They want to see that fight. And when you see what happened out here, and you realize Kurt Angle, he didn't want Jim Cornette to be a buffer. It's like if Joe wants it, bring it on. And Joe didn't hesitate for a minute. Those two are going to lock horns. It's inevitable. And it's getting vicious. And did you hear what Kurt Angle had to say? That he pumped Samoa Joe out? No one's ever pumped Samoa oh, Joe out never. here in TNA. Up next at Bound for Glory. Put your seat belts on. Championship matchup. X Division is next. The X Division home to the most elite athletes in professional wrestling. They wrestle in a dimension where the body holds no limitations. A dimension where the only size that matters is that of the heart. These warriors will risk everything, fly higher, and land harder. Sinchi, the X Division Champion. A man who has dedicated his life to perfecting his craft. A man who has traveled to the farthest reaches of this earth in search of competition that challenges his mind, body, and soul. Will his journey continue at Bound for Glory, or will this man of many disciplines long road come to an end? Chris Salem, former two-time X Division champion, a man whose name is synonymous with Ultimate X. A man who puts his career on the line each and every time he steps into the six-sided ring. Both men 
pioneers who have risked everything to lay the foundation for what has become the pinnacle of professional wrestling. And now, they will meet again to do battle at the greatest event in TNA history, Bound for Glory. They will turn the page on another chapter in X Division history. It's time to settle the score in the X Division. Championship on the line. The challenger, Chris Saban, and the champion, Senshi. It is time, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, for the first of our three championship matchups tonight at Bound for Glory. X Division title on the line. What do you say we break it down? Let's take a look at the bullet points. Let's look at the X Factors for Saban and Senshi. It was last month on pay-per-view. Saban's jackass number two stunts, they backfired. Senshi retained the X Division Championship. Since returning to TNA, Senshi, Japanese for Warrior, dominant in the new era of the X Division. He's the reigning title holder. If there is such a thing as home field, or maybe even home ring advantage, the nod goes to Chris Saban. The local product from suburban Detroit, Hill, Michigan to be exact, he challenges for the X Division gold. The following contest at Bound for Glory is for the X Division Championship, scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, the challenger from Hill, Michigan, Chris Saban. Did you hear what yes. I just heard? They were talking in our headsets that Chris Saban coming down on the left. You can get that announcement, Mike, and then we'll get into this match. Samoa Joe has been ejected from the arena. He's been taken by security out of the CompuWare Arena here in Detroit, Michigan, and I think that's a good call. Let cooler heads prevail. And his opponent, from Brooklyn, New York, he is the exclusive champion, Sanchi! The man with the educated feet, as you like to call him, oh. DW. He can hit you from anywhere, any place, any time with them, and I know one thing, he's gonna use them right here tonight because he's gonna have to. Because if there's one thing about a home field advantage, let me tell you something, Chris Saban from nearby Hell Michigan has it. When he came out, if we were getting that information about Samoa Joe being barred from the building the rest of the night, the crowd erupted for the hometown boy. They have seen him wrestle in this town for a lot of years here, and they love Chris Saban. Great shot there as referee Mark Slick Johnson showed the championship belt to the challenger. You looked into the eyes of Chris Saban, and he made contact not with Slick Johnson. He looked directly at the gold, the X Division title. Looks to me like Chris Saban is incredibly focused tonight here in his hometown of Detroit. Well, he knows what people have been saying. He knows that, that a lot of people haven't been happy with, the, like you mentioned, the jackass number two antics that they, they were using when that movie came out. They, you know, big fans, they thought it was funny. And, Jay Lethal, Sanjay Dutt coming in, and I think he realizes that tonight it's got to be all business. He has got to be as focused as a man can be because since he is always all business. He's been trying to get into the head of Chris Saban and tell him exactly that for the past couple of months. X Division pioneer Jerry Lynn. Jerry Lynn working behind the scenes here in TNA as one of the agents. And Jerry Lynn has been, he's been trying to tell and, and point out to Chris Saban that yes, there's certainly time to have your fun. But when you get inside that six-sided ring, when you have an opportunity to become X Division champion, it's got to be all business. Well, especially now that TNA with the prime time here on November 16th, now Bound for Glory, the biggest audience that we've had in the history of TNA, you cannot be fooling around with this. And there, there was one is. of those shots by Senshi. Tried to, uh, oh man, they gave up in the corner, Senshi caught him with the kick, Saban answers, first arm drag, then drops him down, check out the spot he's strong, oh, Raven, great. and Shot. two, no! Man alive, he almost had a quick win right there, he just kind of wrapped him up, and again, Senshi goes at him, and then Chris Saban able to kick the knee right there, of Sid G, and if you're gonna take out Sid G, then you need to take out the legs. Oh, German suplex released. Sid G amazingly lands on his feet. Oh, missed with the first kick, but caught him coming back. How does, I mean, that guy's ability is unreal. It's, the, the way he can land on his feet, I mean, you know, you, you say it's like a cat, but you watch Sid G. His feet are like the direct extension to his mind. The close-up look at the face of the X Division champion, Senshi. And yes, he does have that game face on 24-7, no doubt.
doubt about that. Point of the elbow, drilled save, and here's the follow cover. Sweet Johnson down to the cap, but just two. Other than the looks you saw in the eyes of Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe, does anybody have a more intense expression than Shen Chi at all times? No question. Seems like he's wearing that scowl all the time with the knife edge chop. Oh, that'll light up the chest of the challenger, Saban. Oh, in no time. Yeah, what a wild situation between Angle and Joe. Fans demanding it yesterday at Fan Interaction, and obviously the reaction that we saw here is the pin attempt by Senshi on Saban provides just a two count. The reaction that we see here at the arena here in Detroit, much of the same. They want to see Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle, and I can't blame them because I do too. But I do like the decision to be made. We have got so, we got three championship matches, and of course, career versus title. With Kurt Angle being the special enforcer, we can't have interference in that by any means from Samoa Joe, and they made the right move. Let, let him fight another day. I concur 100%. Great call by Jim Cornette from TNA Management. Championship belts on the line. Most important pay-per-view in our company history, and let's settle it inside that six-sided ring. These guys just kind of weighing each other out right now. I mean, you'll see some things from these two. That, wow, it just happens every time they're in the ring. Nice kick right there by Senshi as he just kind of waited till he got there in perfect timing. Can attempt to two count. Both feet. Whoa. Saban barely able to kick out. That was incredible impact in the corner. Yes. As Senshi got both boots up right into the chest. Chris Saban, Snap Mayor Capo. We've got fans actually cheering, I think, for Senshi and Saban both here in Detroit. Well, Senshi's the kind of guy it's hard to move against. I mean, he just he's so methodical in what he does. He's so business-like, and I mean, he's just so good. I was just going to say, he is so <laughs> damn good. Oh, you're right. But Chris Saban, you and I have been talking about him. We've seen, we've seen him now for, what, close to three years? Yes. Maybe a little more. A little bit and, longer, I believe. And we've watched this guy grow here at TNA. He's a former two-time X Division champion, and he's a guy that has so much ability. I mean, it's he is what the X Division personifies. And man, the G almost able to get a pin, but Chris Saban has that fire in him to get out. But if you think about it, the title reigns by Chris Saban here in TNA Don. Here a couple of years ago. That's, that's yesterday's news if you think about it at this point. When we saw the phenomenal AJ Styles, when we saw the fallen angel Christopher Daniels, another slam, another pin attempt, and another two count for Sen Chi. When we saw them leave the X Division to become a tag team, and yes, they have been quite successful as NWA Tag Team Champions. When we saw that, we, we also saw a new beginning, a new era here in TNA for the X Division, and to me, Sen Chi has been the dominant force of the X Division ever since that point. Oh, with Samoa Joe moved on, it was Sen Chi that took up the ball, man. He's, he's the one that took the reins. And look at that, as you saw Saban miss the kick, Sen Chi able to get out. I love the way Weinstein put up and just nailed him right the back of the head. Oh, and he did catch him. He did drill him with that hook style kick. Good look for the pin. Got his arms down and no, just a two count that time before Saban's able to power out. Must Chris Saban have going through his mind at this point? Opportunity here in his hometown to regain that X Division Championship belt on that, that he's been gunning for for the past couple of years. And he has been on the receiving end oh, of, look at that. of some incredible moves from Sen Chi, including that one. Well, I mean, you saw Saban pounding on the back of Sen Chi. It's like Sen Chi was just setting him up, taking the blows, taking the blows. And then when he saw the moment, Rolls around. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. It hits him with that shot. And you're right. Chris Saban right now absolutely cannot find his oh. direction. As Sin oh. one shot after another. You heard the impact of that stiff, brutal kick. Just echo three all three. Oh, no, that's how you stop it, Mike. Missile drop kick off the top. Could this be the move that turns it in Saban's favor? Wow, I'm telling you, he knew he had a split second to make that decision. And Chris Saban went to that top rope, dropped that missile drop kick, and now look at him. Just going right at him, one shot after another. Fires, oh, series of offensive moves. The chops, oh, and then he takes Senchi and fires him right out to the arena floor. You see Senchi immediately favoring his knee. Wait a minute, here he goes. Saban dive. Oh, wow. Suicide dive, and that one was on contact. Right into the rail, Professor. He just nailed Senchi right into the rail. The body of Senchi went crashing right into the steel. We're going to take another look. Check this out. You can see right there where Saban throws him out. And then Sin Chi trying to get up and then look up, and here he comes. Watch this, Chris Saban right oh, through the second and the third rope, and 
Cincy had no chance to get away, Mike. We come back live. Saban measures him. Going to go springboard again. No, that time leapfrogged over. Back kick right into the gut. And Zagiri drilled him in the back of the head. Oh, this is the fire we remember from Chris Saban, the guy with so much ability in this division. And now, oh, he sets up. Can he be going for that hesitation drop? Here it comes. Oh, he hits it. It's like he suspends in midair, and then he nails it right to the face. Hang time by Saban. Catches him with that drop kick. Pin count two. No. Got it. No. Just got the shoulder up before the three count. We almost had a new champ. I'll tell you, he hit that so hard. I thought maybe that that since she wasn't sure where he was and that he was going to be able to get that pin. But that's what great champions do. They react instinctively, and that's what since she did. He's able to get the shoulder up. Saban going to take Senshi up. Attempted the power bomb, fought off with a series of elbows with the top of the head, and Senshi out of this. He's got him hooked here. Senshi, has got the submission hold applied, and Saban instinctively just took him and backed him right up into the corner to break it. Well, you have to use your momentum the best way you can. Took him into the turnbuckles because Senshi, look at this. Whoa! As he was going for it, Chris Saban caught him low and sent Senshi down. Attempted the cartwheel kick doesn't work. Saban catches him with a kick. Spring back off the middle rope. Go! Oh! Just two, only two. Oh, I thought Saban was going to beat him again. That's the second time that I thought Saban was going to win the title. How do you get your shoulder up after taking a DDT like that? That just shows you. That's a hard head right there by Sinchi. That was unreal. Listen to the crowd showing their appreciation, yelling, this is awesome. Then it is. Saban. What does he have to do next? Does he have to hit the cradle shock on Senshi to put him away? And I think he was going to go for it right there. But Senshi very wisely, very smartly, hooked that rope so that Saban couldn't get him up on his shoulders. And I know it's been all business for Saban, but you got to wonder if in Senshi's mind, he's wondering, where's Sanjay Dutt, where's Jay Lethal? Are they going to come out and do something stupid? Oh, Mike, look at this. Up on top, precarious position. Oh, he snaps it off! But Senshi rolls through, oh! and then stops him right in the chest. The Warriors win! Listen to this crowd go crazy. They appreciate the hard work of both of them. Pin, Sinchi on top. Got it. Right back to the action. Sinchi and Saban. Sinchi on the offensive. Going to try and follow up. Going to shoot Saban across into the ropes. Oh. Caught him with a knee right in the gut. Oh, nice shot right there by Sinchi. And look at him come around. Oh, and he, it looks like he kind of slippery and hit it even cleaner. And that's why Chris Saban able to kick out of the two count. Did it look that to you? I think that might have been the difference. We saw when Sinchi hit that middle rope. Just that momentary delay. He didn't get all of his power behind the kick. It, it was effective. It caught Saban in the head. It momentarily stopped him. It didn't knock him out, and Saban is still alive. Yes, good point right there. And that's why when you do high risk moves like that, you've got to hit him for five. I don't even know how these guys can even attempt to do some of the things they do, let alone hit him at all. Oh! I don't know. He just caught him square in the face, and it looked like a tooth or something shot right out of his mouth. What a kick. What impact in the corner by the challenger saving on the champ, Sinchi. Going to take him up to the cradle shock. Look at, look at see Sinchi's fighting out of it for everything he's got. And now Sinchi got him up and saving fights out. Here comes he's got it. Cradle shock on the way. He's got him up. He spins it. Yeah. He hits it. Senshi, he's been rocked. In trouble in the corner. Saban, I think sensing at this point, Don, that he, <laughs> I don't know what he's going to pull out of his bag of tricks to put him away, but he's got to do something impactful and he can't wait. And he knows he's got Senshi right now. Uh -oh. Apart the pun on the ropes. He does, and you see Senshi right now fighting for everything he's got, realizing that championship could be lost. And look oh. at that kick, look at that ability to stay on the rope and throw the kick. Look at how agile he is. Series of just vicious, lethal, stiff kicks to the chest of the challenger Saban. Since he regroups and charges, shot into the turnbuckle. 
with full force. That's yeah, not just the drop kick. It's that concussive effect when you just crash into the corner. Oh. Like Warriors way. Here Warriors comes way. The He's headed to the top. Stop. Here it comes. Oh. That's it. Off the top. Oh, you Stop. know that's it. Warriors way. Here we go. Is he going to cover him? Hesitation here. Drapes the arm. One, two, two. dog. Oh, yeah. Hasted where he was off to the side and he couldn't get over. Gabe Saban just enough of looking for right at it. Oh, is there any way that Saban is going to be able to hang on here? What a matchup between two Warriors. Not just He's got to get a rope break. He's got to. He was so no, close he... and then Sinchi pulled him right back out. Look at the elbows. Look at the shots by Sinchi. One after the other. Oh, Saban rolled him up. Roll up. Two. He got it. They were both so spent, and it just took getting him in the right hole, and he did it. Little post-match celebration here. Check this out. Saban's buddies have hit the ring. Sanjay Dutt, Jay Lethal. You know, they helped him for several months with those jackass number two stunts. Tonight, not about jackass, no. not about BS, not about nonsense. It's about the X Division, and we've got a new X Division champ. There's Jerry Lynn in the ring as well, the X Division pioneer. To the back, JB with Christian Cage. Up next here at Bound for Glory, it's the eight mile street fight. Good friends now. Shut the hell up. Bound for Glory, the eight mile street fight. Rhino, for the last couple weeks, all I've heard is you walk around talking about how you grew up tough, how you had it hard on the streets. The streets right around here. You even showed some sappy video of the locals putting you over, saying that you're, you're just like them. Well, Rhino, where I come from, we call people like that bums. We call them scumbags. We call them dirt balls. We call them pieces of crap. And the thing is, they look at you like you've actually accomplished something in your life when the fact is, if you are packing groceries at the supermarket, you still would have accomplished more than any of the losers sitting in this arena tonight. You think that concussion's bad, Rhino? You think that post-concussion syndrome's bad? It's nothing, absolutely nothing compared to what I'm gonna do to you tonight in front of your loved ones, your family, your friends. I guess it's safe to say, Rhino, after tonight, I'm not gonna be invited back to the house for dinner like old times, huh? Well, that's all right, because your aunt's cooking sucked anyways. It's like this. Just like the mighty St. Louis Cardinals walked into town last night and handed the Detroit Tigers their ass. Tonight, Rhino, I walk into your hometown and do the exact same thing. And trust me when I say it's not going seven games. Tonight, I go for the clean sweep. Because that's... I don't think people really realize exactly what we're talking about here as far as the friendship between myself and Rhino. We've been more than friends. We've been like brothers. I shared everything with you. I shared the last 10 plus years with you. Funny thing about life is you can't carry your friends forever. Sometimes you gotta prop them up, stand them on their own two feet, look right in their face and tell them they gotta be a man. Rhino's not gonna walk away from a match like this in spite of the doctors insisting that he not compete here tonight and don't surrender. Is my head gonna be 100% at Bomb for Glory? No, it's not. In this neighborhood, you don't work, you don't eat, you don't pay your bills. You talk! about dishing out painful lessons. I'm going to teach you a painful lesson of your own. I'm going to teach you what happens when you stab a friend in the back. This was never about you. This is about me and my legacy. Christian better realize he's not just fighting Rhino.
He's fighting his whole neighborhood. This match, it's for that guy that lost his job because a factory closed down when you were sitting high on your horse. You don't bite the hand that feeds you, and that's exactly what you did. And you've got a concussion to show for it. Do I feel bad? Not a chance. Christian, enjoy the dream life you have now. Because come October 22nd, bow for glory, Detroit, Michigan, I'm going to show you a nightmare you'll never forget. Welcome to my world. What's more appropriate in the Motor City than an eight-mile street fight? It's Christian Cage, one-on-one -on -one against the War Machine Rhino, and it's next at Bound for Glory. Ladies and gentlemen, Bound for Glory continues with this eight-mile anything goes street fight scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Tampa, Florida, by way of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, Christian Cage! We are looking backstage here in Bound for Glory. Christian Cage preparing for the eight mile street fight. And his opponent from Detroit, Michigan, he is the war machine, Rhino! He's dedicated this matchup to the people, yes, of his hometown. And here comes the war machine down the steps through the crowd here in Detroit. Man, if you got to wonder about the concussions and everything that Christian Cage has done to a mic. But if you're going to be able to get past that, if you're going to be able to look past that, you're going to be able to do it in your hometown of Detroit, and this crowd is going to be behind Rhino 100%. And you can feel that. Look at Rhino going right after Christian. They're going to start it. And look at this milk the crowd and get them fired up. Don, when we watched that video package prior to this matchup, I saw what you did, and I did it as well. As we saw the replays of every chair shot to the head by Christian Cage to the War Machine Rhino that caused those concussions. I win, you win. He's taking it to the back, and yeah, they're gonna start outside. Eight mile street fight here at the CompuWare Arena in Detroit, Michigan. The War Machine gonna go outside. He's gonna take it to the streets, and here we go. And there they are, as they just start blow for blow outside right here, and look at this. Oh, right on top of the vehicles, and I mean, this is going to be a war. Oh. This is going to be a war from start right to finish. Now. Anything goes in an 8-mile street by Mike. That's, that's, no that's the key. No rules. Turn him loose here. Ah, Anything goes in this match, and you can see, he's just been tossed on the hoods of several cars. The war machine Come on, Christian. Big right Get up. Hand, this is Christian my town. He just threw him into a garbage tub right there. Pulled him out, and man, look at this. The battle is on. And Rhino, he has come out focused. He has come out pumped up, and he's going to take it to Christian Cage early, and he's going to have to because you have to wonder about his condition. Even though you don't see it right there, he's going to get his bell rung in this match, and you're going to have to wonder how it's going to affect him, Mike. Just dropped him right there on a wooden pallet back first, and now going to him back inside the building, and he just knocked over that whole stack of boxes. Man, this, I'd hate to be the referee in something like this. Your job is to follow these guys anywhere and everywhere. You can see Christian Cage dropping things in Rhino's path. Anything he can do to deter him. He's up on top of the Zamboni, for God's sake. Well, there is this. I mean, this is an ice skating rink. It's a hockey Stop. arena. You're not kidding. The Zamboni back there in the backstage area. Oh, oh man, man dropped it. Right on top and Rhino getting in the driver's position. What? He's driving the Put it in gear, turn it loose. Oh, here he goes. Here he comes, he's got Christian on top, and he's driving the damn Zamboni Zab into the building. Oh, he's bringing it right up here to the, close to the entrance zone. And you can see it by coming in from over there. Christian K. Looking at right now. Well, what a sight here in Pound for Glory. Fighting on top of a Zamboni, have you ever seen that? No, I'm just saying, just when you think you've seen everything, you turn onto a TNA pay-per-view like Bound for Glory, and wow, bad, bad fall for Christian Cage. Look at the height of that from the top of the Zamboni. Unbelievable. 
Christian Cage is going to have to find a way to get his bearings because Rhino has taken the fight right to him from the beginning, Mike. He's not let up for one second. Christian, I think, just trying to find some kind of a buffer. And Rhino relentless right here. Just relentless. Totally on the offensive side. We've seen it right from the outset of this matchup. The war machine, and you can't blame it. Totally focused on revenge. We've told the story so many times about these long-time personal friends. This is one friendship that's just been flushed right down the toilet by Christian Cage. And he's picking up part of the set here, Don. Check oh. this out. That's one of those street lamps signifying the eight-mile street fight. Oh, man. And check that out. War Machine caught him. Rhino's got it. Going to use it as a oh! weapon. Just clean this. What? Swung like Albert Pools right there. I'm just going to say, say, say that quietly here in this town. Swung it like about a 25-pound baseball bat. Well, looking like at least uh, Yvonne Rodriguez, shall we there say. There you go. Balance it off. He's got an, there it is, a street sign, eight mile road, as he threw it into the ring. Oh, Christian Cage has had his bell rung, and he has not been able to get any kind of momentum. We saw him rake the eyes earlier. Try to do anything to stop Rhino, and this didn't even phase Rhino right now. The war machine, grabbing chairs from the crowd. A little help from, oh. his, a little help from his hometown friends, would you say? Oh, he's just throwing it in, he doesn't care. Look at that. Going to fill up the ring with all kinds of weapons. Chair after chair being sent in. And now he's going to go back and take Christian. Oh, face first right into the apron. You got to wonder if he was gone too long from Christian, but it doesn't seem like it. It's, it's, he just goes right after. Look at him now. Trying to pull that other street lap towards it all into the ring. Oh, oh. and what happened was the cords got tangled but he was able to hit Christian with it anyway. It's this great, look at that, busted him right on top of the back. Gonna roll him over, and yes, go for a pin. Barely a two count before Christian Cage powers out. Used his leg strength to kick out before three. Yeah, that's the only way you're gonna win this match, is to get a pin like that, but I think he wants to inflict more damage. I don't even think he really cared about pinning him. He wants to gore him right here. Oh, and that's how you'll get back into Christian Cage. Went for the gore. Came sprinting out of the corner. And Christian Cage just took that chair and wrapped it right around his neck. Hit him right in the face, right in the eye. You can see that. Rhino holding his eye. And you got to think about the head of Rhino. All the excessive chair shots he's taken from Christian Cage in the past two months. You have to wonder about You're his right. health. And he caught him clean right there on top of the head. And you can see referee Andrew Thomas, Don, checking with Rhino. And I'm sure that's the situation. I mean, as, as much as he's gone through, with the multiple concussions, with the post-concussion trauma, to be hit in the head with a chair like he just was right there. You've got to wonder, and he's 100%, and look at him try and fight back, and he caught him with a couple of moves and then sent him into the steel. I mean, the doctor told him what, to not wrestle for what, three, four months, something like that? And he said he couldn't. He had to go out there. He had to do it here in Detroit. And he is still going at it. Christian Cage not able to get the momentum, and Rhino, Oh, he's getting the revenge he's wanted. The revenge he deserves. Rhino said it. Remember the press conference. He said, there's no way I'm going to miss Bound for Glory in my hometown. Are you kidding me? Screw what the doctor said. Screw the doctor's orders. And now he's oh, maybe a little pre-celebration here with the fans. Hasn't beaten Christian Cage yet. Just a little energy drink, Mike. That was Gatorade. I'm sure of that. I'm sure it was. Christian trying to get away, trying to find a place to get away. There's nowhere to go. They're packed in here like sardines. Oh, no, man. he just went right into the hockey glass. I believe where they're at, Don, is over there by the bench area where, right. where normally the hockey players would be on the bench. He sent him into the glass, he brought him right back, and now he's going to toss him over the guardrail. All over the Cupware Arena right here. And Rhino is taking it to Christian, and he has a couple shots, a great chair shot right there by Christian Cage was the only offense he was able to get. Now look at Rhino pulling out the table. He is ready to just, this has been an absolute one-sided affair as it gets.
Christian with just that momentary burst of offense when he used the chair, when he stopped Rhino in his tracks with that chair shot, but you're right, other than that, it has been all the war machine here in his hometown. Christian, I saw him sneak up to his feet right there and caught Rhino. Rhino, I think, realizes it okay. Let me get in the ring, get out in front of Christian and get the momentum back. But Christian, knowing he's got to go. Oh, look at this. The belly to belly suplex just sends him over. Planted him right in mid ring with that belly to belly and now turns his attention, oh, yes, yes, to the table. What's he going to do? Going to stack it in the corner? Oh, he's going to set him up to try to go oh, right yeah. through there. I mean, Rhino is getting everything that he's thought about giving to Christian Cage. And look at this. Christian Cage just barely hanging on. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Shoulders down. Two count only on Rhino. That'd Christian Cage almost stole one. That would have been a disgrace for Christian Cage to win it that way. Oh, oh. he just breathed it with the eight-mile road sign. That's, that's just no regular street sign, Don. Just breathed him. Yeah, that street sign's got to be, what would you say, four or five four, feet? Four feet at least. Oh, man, now that's what you do if you're Christian Cage. That's how you get things turned your way. I mean, it's all legal. Anything and everything in an eight-mile street fight. And he's spinning on the street sign, and we know what that signifies. It signifies what this man thinks of everybody that's in this building, a few fans at home, and yes, everyone from the city of Detroit in particular. Oh, you can see now Christian Cage getting the ladder, throwing it in, as Rhino getting to his feet. And a shot after shot to the head. And now, oh, Rhino's busted. It looks like he is. Rhino's busted open. And I got to tell you, I really believe that last shot was the eight-mile rope sign. That shot right there, I think. Look at the eyes. I was just going to say, Don. He's the, glazed over. He's the, done. The close-up look that we just saw right there. The face of Rhino. And you can see it in his eyes. Don, this, yeah. is, this is what we've seen the past couple of times. Oh! oh! Amazingly, as he was charged at with that ladder, he was able to drop Christian. Oh man, got him, I don't know, got him in position on the ladder. Rhino gonna head up into the corner. He still looks dazed to me. He but does he... to me too, blood flowing down his face. And, oh, that's not a good, that's not good. He took too much time, and I think Christian Cage has seen it too, Mike. I, I mean, it's almost like he, all right, he got fooled by Rhino, and he set up now, he Here goes for the here, and he hits it. Dropped him That's right it. down again on his That's head. It. Unpretty one, one two, two. No! Rhino gets his shoulder up. I mean, how many matches through the years has Christian Cage won with that move? Oh, well. Hundreds and hundreds. Rhino is just right now in a different world. And he is not going to be beaten by Christian Cage tonight. And you can see that from the start. And no matter what Christian Cage does right here, Rhino gets to his feet. Got that ladder in position. Oh, oh God, to use it as a weapon, and he does right into his face, right into the head. Oh, no, he's holding it up, setting it up there. What's he going to do? Is he going to go high risk? No, he goes down and going to get more weapons. Oh, the crowd turning on Chris, what they should from the beginning. Everything he's done to disrespect him here. What is he doing down I'm there? I'm not sure. He's down underneath that ring, right at the apron. And I have no idea what he's going under the ring for. Obviously, oh, it's another look at weapon. A straight jacket. Okay, steel chair and a straight jacket. Oh, he's going to try to get him inside that straight jacket. Been, no, no, look at the look and the glazed look on Rhino's face. It's scary, isn't it? Oh, he's going to get him in that thing, and there's nothing Andrew Thomas can do to stop it. There's nothing he right. can do. It's anything goes. Anything goes. He can't do anything but look on. And look at he's got Rhino in it. He's got one arm in position. Now he's got the second one. And now he's cinching that straight jacket oh, on it. This he's helpless sickening. at this point. He's totally 100% defenseless. There's no way he can fight back. And now he's got the arms wrapped around and he's going to strap them together. Oh, someone. I, I know they can't stop it, but they got to. Oh. oh, no. There's no way Rhino's coming out of this. Look at him, what's he, what's he decided which chair he wants better? Oh, he wants that room. He, he threw the plastic chair away, and he grabbed the metal one. Did you see that? Oh, uh, no. He's I, putting his hand on the one metal chair. Come on. The man can't fight back at all. Oh, oh thank God he was able to roll out of the way. He was defenseless. Oh, right home. Fighting back. How is this guy fighting back? Got to his feet. He can't use it. Look at that. Oh, that's how you do it. You got to use everything at your disposal right there. And Rhino realizes it, and he calls to the ref to unhook him. Might as well use that head as a battering ram. Exactly what he did. Referee Andrew Thomas able to take him out of the straight jacket and let him fight like a man here against Christian Cage. Well, you got to respect the hey, no, He didn't stop him from putting it on, but when he got the chance to 
to get it off of him. He asked it, and he got it off. And now you can see, though, Christian Cage still seems to be in control and have the high ground right here. But Rhino fighting for everything he's got. Both men battling right on the ring apron. And this, there's not much room out there for these two men, especially the size of someone like Rhino. And Rhino momentarily getting the better of it. And he hit him with a right hand on the side of the head that sent Christian back inside the ring. Where's he going to take him now? Rhino's got him set up on the rope right here. The, the table, there we go. The, he's going to set the table. Oh, look at this. Now, is he going to do what I think? Is he going to pound drive him? Yeah, he's oh! driving him right to the table. Wow. That was freaking awesome, man. My God. Pile driver from the apron. Head first goes Christian Cage to the table. We've got to look at it again. Let's see this right here. As you can see him. The table. Take another look. Another look at this. Oh, oh, man. Man. Rhino. I mean, this guy. Here's a pin. Two. It. Oh, he got his belt on the ropes. Christian Cage by that instinct. Awesome. Awesome. Operating on fumes, I think, at this point. Christian, just on instinct, you're right, able to take that leg, drape it over the bottom rope. It would have been a three count. Oh, Table's already him. there. He's going to set him up. I want you to scream at that when he hits buddy. it. When he hits three this loud one. one. Oh, no. He went for the board. Christian Cage able to stop it. Pin. One, one two. two. Oh, he got out of it. How can he get out of that after crashing into that table that hard? Sense of frustration on the face of Christian Cage. On prettier a second time. Where's he going to take it? Oh, right on top of the table. Steel, right on the steel part of the table. Two, it's done. Now, he got out of it again. How many lives does he have? This guy just won't die. Christian Cage nails the unprettier right there on top of the table. But you have to be concerned got about these yes. serious shots to the head and look out. Look at this. He's got steel chairs. He's stacking steel chairs. He's stacking a table as well on top. Road of right sides. Up. He's just piling it on. Putting him on his body look and more this. importantly, Don, putting so much of that steel in those chairs right on his head. Now what's he going to do? Piled on more chairs. He's grabbed another metal chair. Gonna use that as the win. No! Oh, just slammed it on top of no! it. Look no! at the speeding. Shot shot. Look at the concussions. Oh, this is awful. One shot after another. Speeding him personally. As merciless as he is right there. I, I just wish he'd pin him and get this sickness over with. He rolls him over. There's nothing left in Rhino. One, two. Got it. It's almost like a mercy Oh, man, Rhino kept rising from the grave, but he couldn't do it one more time. Couldn't do it one more time. Look at that. He piled everything with the kitchen sink on top of him, Mike. What an incredible gutsy effort by the war machine, Rhino. Christian Cage stacks the chairs, stacks the tables on his head, repeated shots to the head. He gains the one, two, three. Christian Cage victorious and bound for glory. To the back, Jeremy Borash standing by with the Latin American exchange. What incredible action we've seen thus far here at Bound for Glory, but fasten your seatbelt. Up next, inside six sides of steel, the World Tag Team Championship on the line. LAX challenging AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. To live and die in LAX, it takes a nation of millions to hold us back and a company full of racists to hold us down. But no longer, porque esta noche, LAX, vamos a ser los nuevos campeones mundiales. It's over. You want to put us behind borders? You want to put us behind fences? You want to put us in your prison, in your cages? Well, tonight, you're going to feel what thug life is all about. We're going to raise the LAX violence to a new level. Now, just to show you that we are not on good terms with you guys, since it's so close to Christmas, after we take those championships from you, we're willing to do a little gift exchange. I'm going to tell you what you can give us, and I'm going to tell you what we're going to give you. We're going to give you a dirty Sanchez, you can give us a rusty trombone. Now, AMW, you talk about that little oriental that we brought across all the way back to Korea. You guys keep flapping your gums about the USA. It's about Latino nation. Orale arriba la raza. Dile homicidia. Oh, yeah. And
and we are live back inside the CompuWare Arena here in the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan. Steel cage being erected as we speak. The six sides of steel, Don, being, there you see it, they're stacking up the six sides of steel here in preparation for our NWA World Tag Team title matchup. TNA, ladies and gentlemen, it's the talk of the sports world as well. Everywhere you look, David Eckstein of the St. Louis Cardinals in the press conference prior to game one of the World Series talking about TNA wrestling. You check out this, well, the World Series program. Show the camera. Well, think about this. What is the biggest sporting event going on right now? Right here in Detroit, it's the World Series. And if you go to the World Series and you get the program, you open it up and there's an article on guess who? A.J. Przinsky, now you all remember A.J. Przinsky and his run here at TNA. Well, you can get the program and read the article on A.J. And they talk about TNA wrestling in your World Series program. That's what's going on right now. We are the buzz, Mike. TNA wrestling is the buzz in the world right now in the wrestling And world. to see the reaction from this incredible crowd here in Detroit, Michigan, so if you think about it, Don, every match here at Bound for Glory, it's been electric here in the Motor City. It's been so great, and we've got so much more to come. Up next, we're going to put him inside the six sides of steel. We're going to settle the score. LAX, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, the tag title match is next. Don't get in, guys. As a result of what happened in Mexico City between AJ Styles and LAX and the violence that occurred there, the NWA World Tag Team title will be on the line at Bound for Glory in the signature map of TNA, a specialty, the six sides of steel. You like to put up fences and borders and barriers to keep us out of the country? Now, those two hoes, AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels, will be in a cage in our world of LAX violence. And we will prove once again in Detroit at Bound for Glory that gringos have no heart and no pantalones. Orale arriba la raza! Look at this right there, you can see Christopher Daniels, AJ Styles, they're on the attack for once, as they have been sliced out at LAX. AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, taking it to LAX, two teams gonna square off in that steel cage. Oh, they busted Hernandez wide open. Bad blood between these two teams. It's just boiled over here in TNA. We've seen it for the past several months. Styles and Daniels, Conan and his Latin American exchange. And you see AJ Styles is locked out. He can't help Daniels. Daniels is getting three on one. AJ gonna, look at this. AJ Styles gonna try and climb over that cage door. Oh, but he's met by homicide up at the top of the steel cage while they continue to beat the hell out of the fallen angel. We're gonna lock Conan outside the ring with the steel cage on. It isn't gonna be like this in Bound for Glory. Oh, the Latin American exchange, the hero of violence. But we're gonna put you in a cage. And you're going to see a level of violence, LAX violence, like you've never seen before. The borders have been erased with blood. There is nowhere to run. There is nowhere to hide. And a new era of violence has arrived. Now, with each team having scored a victory, this feud can only be contained in this enclosure of evil. NWA World Tag Team Champions, the phenomenal AJ Styles and the fallen angel Christopher Daniels defend their tag team titles against the Latin American Exchange in Six Sides of Steel. LAX, orale, orale, arriba la raza. It's coming up next at Bound for Glory. It's Six Sides of Steel for the NWA World Tag Team title. It's Conan's Latin American Exchange. It's Homicide and Hernandez against AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. Mike, you can see right there the steel cage getting put up, getting ready for the rubber match, as we call it. We saw the border brawl that LAX won. Ultimate X, of course, was won by AJ Styles and Christopher Daniels. And I love the fact that they're going to settle it in the cage because that way Conan is locked out. Can't come in because it seems like he's always been there when LAX was victorious. But there's one thing we know about Daniels and Styles. It doesn't matter where they run. Has there been a more physical? No. Has there been, Don, a more violent feud that you have seen in the years that you've been associated here at TNA than this rivalry between Conan's Latin American Exchange and Styles and Daniels? I mean, think about it. Styles and Daniels are such great competitors, and yes, they're friends and they're partners. And then you look at LAX, and they almost consider themselves their own race, their own country, and they take everything personal, and it has turned in to a feud, it's turned into a war. I mean, the hatred level that they have 
is absolutely unreal when you're talking about the feud between LAX and Styles and Dan. Conan talks about the Latino revolution, the era of violence here in TNA. Well, Conan, Homicide, Hernandez, they, can ta they have taken that era of violence here in TNA to a completely different level than anything we've ever seen. Well, the thugs, I mean, that's just it. They're, they're, they're a gang, and, and that's their mentality. And it's all about the beatdown, and it's all about sending a message and sending a statement. And look at the crowd in anticipation for this What a great shot match. that is. Oh, I mean, this is unbelievable, folks. The walk-up traffic after the place was sold out was unreal. There are people outside that couldn't get in. It, it's been unbelievable, the crowd that we've got here these, tonight. These wide shots are incredible. And ladies and gentlemen, if this doesn't drive home the point of how hot TNA wrestling is, when you're going head-to-head -head with the Detroit Tigers in the World Series, and you have a crowd like this, Don, it's, it's standing room only almost in here. There's someone in every seat. It's absolutely incredible here at the CompuWare Arena. Well, it just shows they respect what's going on at TNA, and they realize that there is a new face of professional wrestling. And, and with, with the prime time spot coming on November 16th, man, TNA is just a rocket ship taking off. You're not kidding. Up next, it's time for the tag team title matchup, ladies and gentlemen. There you see the graphic. This is title match number two here at Bound for Glory. It's for the tag team gold. Let's take a look at the tag lines now. Let's break it down. Look at these bullet points in anticipation of this title match. Conan's gang of militant thugs, Homicide Hernandez, captured the tag belts on impact. They took advantage of their style of match, the border brawl. Last month at No Surrender, will you ever forget Christopher Daniels, the leap of faith from the top of the steel cables. It allowed he and Styles to regain. Tonight at Bound for Glory, let's settle this score between these two teams once and for all. It's one of TNA's signature matches. It's time to lock them in the cage. It's time for six sides of steel. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. It is for the NWA World Tag Team Championship inside the Six Sides of Steel. Introducing first the challengers from the Latino Nation, accompanied by Conan, Homicide, and Hernandez, the Latin American Exchange. You can hear the crowd giving it to him as you see these guys, but one thing you can't take away from LAX is the attitude. They've got attitude and they believe in themselves. And think about what links they will go to prove their point. Think about last week on MP. That was sick. And what they did to Gail Kim. But they were working together with AMW one minute and turn on him the next, and then that sight of Hernandez giving Gail Kim the border toss across the ring. 115 pound oh, woman. Sick. You're right. Sickening, and that's who they are. Look at Homicide hanging from the top of the steel cage. They will go to any link on to prove that yes, the Latino revolution has arrived here in TNA. Showing there the height of that cage as we look at Homicide. But Homicide showing his ability, his agility, able to scale that cage just like that. We've talked about the team of Homicide. Hernandez, Don, you've mentioned it on many occasions. They have perhaps with the power and strength and the size of Big Hernandez, with the ability of Homicide, with Conan at ringside, with the strategy that he has, with the brain power, with the game plan, this may be the perfect team that everybody else is gonna have to deal with for an awful long time here in TNA. Uh, they're fearless, they're not afraid to do anything. They'll put their body on the line at any cost. Flags being draped on the ropes by Conan. Homicide, Hernandez as well. LAX is ready, and here we go! Here comes Childs and Daniel. And their opponents are the defending NWA Tag Team Champions of the World! The phenomenal AJ Styles! And the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels! Mike, I've got to throw something at you right here. This is something that normally you would say, but I look this up. These two guys walking down the ramp.
Christopher Fernandez and AJ Styles, between the two of them, have held 19 title belts in TNA. 19? 19. Break it down for me. AJ Styles, three World Heavyweight Championships, five X Division Championships, four tag titles. Christopher Daniels, two X Division Championships, and five tag titles. You add it up, 19 times they've had gold. What are you trying to do? I'm Professor the Professor? I'm just doing my homework, you my friend. You just did it, baby, and I love it. That really tells it. That breaks it down for everybody, just how successful these two guys have been, and here we go. And how about this? They're taking it to LAX. They're taking the offensive right to them. Well, they realized Conan's on the outside, and as soon as they got in that door, and they saw that, that LAX, I think, was watching them, letting them enjoy their stride in, and it's not about that for these guys. It's about just ending this right here with LAX because they are Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles. They are what TNA Wrestling has been founded on. And look at that right there. It's Christopher Daniels, the backbreaker. Yeah, tilt a world backbreaker by Daniels on Homicide. Fired off impactfully into the corner back first. If you think about it, border brawl, that was right up LAX's alley. Perfect for them. Ultimate X, it allowed Styles and Daniels to do what they do best. That's why, just like that, AJ Airborne first with the knee, Daniels the follow move with the elbow. Tonight, six sides of steel. Yes, it isolates Conan. It keeps him out of the action. But does the six sides of steel match favor either of these teams, Don? Oh, kick by Daniels. Oh, this is going to be a match about opportunity. It's going to be a match of when somebody does something special and the other person can't retaliate. That's what this match is going to be about. Well, all four of these guys are so good. They're such great partners with each other. I mean, you can hate LAX all you want, but they're a perfect blend of a tag team when you consider Hernandez and Homicide, and they're fearless. They're not intimidated by all the calls that these two carry in their tin here. All they want to do is just carry on their agenda and make a statement, and what a drop kick by AJ. There's a statement, and put an exclamation point on the end and say, drop kick by AJ Styles right into the face of Homicide. Forearm shot is the follow move. AJ measures him, sends him over to the corner, tag in. Fallen Angel Christopher Daniels is now legal. He also got the knee up right there, and AJ sent him right into the knee. And these guys, they're just so fluid together. Pin Daniels, cover on Homicide for a two count. You're right. Clothesline right into that suplex, and here you see the quick tag. And I think this is really going to be what Styles and Daniels need to counter Homicide and Hernandez, especially when you factor in the size and power of Hernandez. I want to mention something else here. Oh, oh Homicide just vicious right there. Just, and that's how they are. And you see, you see Conan at the ringside area, how happy he is as well. Oh, look at that backbreaker by AJ Styles. Pinned by Styles, no, two count only, barely on Homicide. I want to say this, and it's going to be hard to get this in. I mention it every time on the six side steal, but watch when someone goes face first into the cage or their body hits the cage. There's no give because of the six sides, like that that's right there. Head. Perfect point. AJ, there's no give. He hits it, and that's why you see people get busted open so many times in a match like this, because there's it's like hitting a cheese grater. Your flesh just hits that cage and just rakes across the steel. You're right. It just, it'll cut you open raw. Sends him off into the corner, does Hernandez, who charges in. AJ able to get up the boot. Caught him with that boot right in the face. Oh, oh man, I God, he just, just flung him. Rammed him right in there, and you can see now Christopher Daniels coming out, knowing that AJ Styles caught him between the ropes and the cage, and there's only about, what, eight inches if that? There's yeah, hardly any room there. You're right, Don, and there's no movement. There's no give. Attempt at that tornado DDT on the corner. Daniels able to block it, but he never saw that clothesline coming, and that son of a gun was vicious. Oh, he busted right into that, and I'm telling you, we were talking about how good Styles and Daniels are together. Hey, that's what's made this war so great between these, because you don't really know who the better tag team is right now. LAX, love them, I hate them, and, and most people you gotta hate them. you got to respect yeah, them gotta nonetheless. got to respect them, thank you. Great overhead shot, and there we take a look at it again. We saw that T-bone suplex, first by Homicide, and now up onto the shoulders. Hernandez has Daniels up there, and where's he going to take him? Oh, he's going to use Homicide out of the corner. Homicide up on the top, look all the way. And here comes Homicide with the elbow. Oh, great teamwork. You saw Daniels. The there he goes. Two, no. Kicks out of it. You saw Daniels looking at Homicide, thinking he was coming at him there. And then the next thing you know, Hernandez just dropped him on his back. Oh, it's LAX right now. And 
AJ Styles has been busted. I thought he hit that. I just, I didn't, I just, oh! Took him overhead, did homicide. Fallen Angel crashes down to the canvas, but you're right. AJ Styles, you see his forehead there. It was busted open on, on one of those two times that he was flung into the cage by Hernandez, who goes for the pin on Daniel. It happened right in front of us, and I saw him hit his face first right here, and I thought, there's no way he's going to be able to come through that without being bloody, and sure enough, there's no give in that cage, and that's just the facts. The teamwork here of the Latin American exchange, boy, it's tough to beat. Hernandez and Homicide. Suplex, hit by Homicide, takes Daniels over. Caught him with the knee as he heads to the corner. Looks like Hernandez wants in. Homicide, I think, has other things on his mind. He was talking to Conan around the ringside area. He hit, like Conan handed Homicide. So oh! It looks like a fork. Is that what it was? It looked like a fork. He took whatever that object was that Conan handed through the cage, and he drove it right into the head of I Daniels. I don't know if we can see this. If we can get a close-up, I swear he's got a fork right against his head. Right there as he goes over to, oh, unbelievable how he's been blocked from the view. And he has just taken that fork and grinded it in Daniel's head. Oh, you're right. Homicide channeling Abdullah the Butcher, using that fork, repeated shots to the head of the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. Well, they any way they can do it, they fight so dirty. And you know what? To them, it's just a way of life. I've got to be honest. It's not dirty to them. It's survival to them. It's how they get to the next level. How does Conan describe his own team? Militant thugs, 24-7, 365. Daniel's gonna spring off the ropes, but you know what? This power advantage, it might be too much. Oh, oh, oh man, back first, pile that into a power bomb. I mean, it piles them right Pin. in. Two styles had to come in and make the save. Think of that, it'll shred your back. He takes you with all of his power. He slams your back first into the steel. He follows up with a power bomb. Styles luckily made the save. Wait, wait a minute, they're in the hand of Homicide. Looks like a it is a tequila bottle. Oh, and he just spit the tequila right into the face, and now pouring it on him. Oh, man, that's just insulting injury right there. Homicide and Hernandez, oh, Conan's the, Latin American exchange. Think about the alcohol Ooh. getting into the blood. That's it, I mean, think about that, how, much, how that must burn. The stinging, plus he got it in his eyes. Oh man, Christopher Daniels is in a bad situation right here. With the blood flowing down his, his face, his head down onto his chest, fighting it off and headbutts! Oh. Look at these shots by Daniels from up on top! Oh, look at that! What a shot! Unbelievable! You've got to be kidding me right there! Oh, was that unreal? He hip tossed him from the top rope and the crash down to the canvas. Let's look at this again. Hooks him and then there it goes. Wow. Look at Homicide. Just stunned. And here comes AJ, Mike. Styles unloading. Right hands for both Homicide and Hernandez. Has them rocking back. Elbow sends Homicide into the ropes. Here comes Styles. Quick reversal. Homicide shoots him off. AJ springs back. Inverted DDT. He's so smooth. It's just unbelievable. But you got to remember. Everybody else, there he goes after. He spins around and elbows Hernandez right in the face. Springboard forearm shot by Styles to Hernandez. But the Latin American exchange, they've got the numbers game down pat. Two on one. Missed that clothesline. Here they come. Well, out of nowhere, Christopher Daniels realizes they had a double shot on him right there. And they go after him. And now look at this. This is why they're the tag team champs. This is why they held gold Ooh. 19 different times between the two. They're so resilient, Se and they're so athletic. You're not kidding. Several bad landings in this match for Homicide, including that one right on his oh, tailbone. Oh. Right into the cage for Hernandez. Wow. Styles and Daniels take the big man. They take him, they elevate him up into the air, and yes, turn about fair play. That face was, first into the unprotected steel. That was face first. Nice boot right there by Daniels. High low! Oh, look at that combination, one low, one high. Almost like a pinball between them, and then they take him out with that high low move. High running knee by Daniels into the chest of Hernandez. Follow up, drop kick by AJ. Man, these guys are just putting it on, and they know that they have to. They've got to put it on right there. They can't let up for one second. 
and they're just grating his face. Oh, look at that as they just grate it against the cage. Oh, think of that. Your nose on, your face, your eyes being pressed right into the steel. Oh, what a kick to Pele right to the back of the head of Homicide. Wow, he didn't go full upside down, but he sure came close. Daniels has got the fork, and Daniels took the fork and drove it right into the head of Homicide. You can see he's looking around and said he used it on me. I'm using it on him, and I think you'll have to realize that they used it. And he's trying to stop it, but he, look at that, he's just smiling in his head. Oh, I love it. Styles and Daniels said, you want your hero violence? We're going to bring the violence right to LAX. No. You can see right here a nice forearm shot by Daniels. As Homicide busted open, I think even Daniels might be, I can't see. Oh, Daniels missed, and Homicide catches him with an elbow. STO, judo takedown by Daniels on Homicide. Fernandez, oh man, the impact of that tackle. And again, when a guy that strong, there's the Pele! Pele right there by AJ Styles. That's what I was talking about. Doing the complete upside down by Kick. And the crowd loves it. AJ told me that people come to remember where he goes. And where did you? You come up with that, and he is just something special. That's what he does. We've often talked about how AJ, he can think on his feet. He can improvise in a match like nobody else. Styles gonna try and climb the corner of the cage, kicks Hernandez off. I'm sorry, kicks Homicide off first. Now Hernandez follows up behind him. He's gonna try and pull AJ down from the cage. AJ's gonna have nothing to do with it. Wait Man, a minute. What is he Not doing? AJ, think this through. This is some high Come risk. on, AJ. This is crazy right here. Styles going to the top of the six sides of steel and Homicide follows up. Up. I mean, when you get yourself put in a position, you better make sure of what your game plan is. Is Homicide trying to alter it, whatever it is? But look at AJ. Oh, no, look at this. Now, Homicide got him. But here goes Christopher Daniels up the hill. Daniels as well. Daniels has got Homicide hooked. Homicide and Styles hanging on at the top of the cage. And here comes, oh, here Hernandez, comes Hernandez, the big man from underneath. And he knows that AJ's going to take the worst of this. AJ hanging on. He's trying not to come over the top of the cage. But Hernandez has got so much power. Oh, but AJ able to hold on. And Hernandez goes forward anyway. And all that did was cost out the side. AJ, AJ Everything. The referee doesn't realize that Conan's holding the coat hanger 
from the other side. Look at that view. Good shot by the cameraman. Like Daniels is passed out almost as Styles drops homicide in mid-ring. AJ, though, not any quit in him. There's no quit in him. And he just keeps going. The crowd loving everything they're seeing. Oh, but AJ just got turned inside out, upside down. Bad landing on his neck. No. Here comes. Oh, the great go killer. killer. We said it earlier, love them or hate them. You gotta, you gotta respect, respect them. them, you're damn right. But Conan, again, able to figure out a way to do it. Conan using the coat hanger, choked around the neck, and Christopher Daniels didn't see it. I mean, the referee didn't see it. Christopher Daniels couldn't help AJ Styles out when it became one New Tag Team Champ, Mike. New NWA World Tag Team Champions. They've done it again. Conan's militant thugs. Homicide, Hernandez, the LAX. Yes, they're tag team champs and they're not happy with it. Look at this post-match beatdown. And now you see the beatdown going on right there. And Elliot, come on. Come on, enough is enough. That's you enough won the it. belt. You proved your point. You got the tag belt back. And even Conan, look at this three. This is just sick. Three oh, come on, let's just stop this right now. But see, they're just letting them know. Come on, you got your title. You got your title. Get out of the ring. You're the tag champ. Two title changes already tonight. Right. Two championship matchups. Two new champions here in TNA. LAX, Conan, the celebration. Let's, let's show some highlights of this, Mike, if we can. This this Guys is... in the truck, is it possible? Here we go. It's been an unbelievable match and an unbelievable night. Daniels and Styles come to the ring with the goal. The challengers, LAX, and here's the action. I mean, you just saw, oh, that was an unbelievable move by Daniels right there. And then you saw the inverted DDT by AJ Styles. And then the teamwork. And it looked like it was going to be all Styles and Daniels. And right there, Hernandez, but one person was missing. And it was AJ, and he came off the top. Wow, what a shot of AJ Styles. Look at that. The more amazing, Don, every time we look at it. And then Homicide takes Styles up, just folded him up like an accordion. Gringo Killer equals one, two, three. And as a result, the Latin American Exchange, yes, they have done it again. Wow, I'll tell you something, and again, folks, Conan able to get the coat hanger into Homicide, get it around the neck right there of Christopher Daniels, and nobody saw Conan on the other side of the cage pulling it back. That left Christopher Daniels helpless. There was nothing he could do. AJ fought bravely two on one. What a night this has been. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's been incredible, Don, from the opening matchup. The crowd response here in Detroit, Michigan, completely off the charts, and you know what? It's been unbelievable. The main event is yet to come. Career versus title. Think about everything you've seen, and then think about what's left that's on the line. Sting is fighting for his career, and Jeff Jarrett fighting to hold his title. On that note, let's go back. Let's take a video review of everything leading up to the Bound for Glory main event. He's coming. Last January, he returned a conquering hero. He's back! Showtime in TNA! This crowd is absolutely witnessing history! And embarked on a one-man crusade to rid TNA of Jeff Jarrett. Scorpion death drop! One, two, three. What the hell is this? Cameraman, my ass! He sprayed something in the eyes of Sting! Here comes Sting! Yes, he's back in the match! There it is! Sting in that drop! Two. But his mission was sabotaged by deception and betrayal. He's setting him up right here. What? What? What did he just do? Now, 
After two months in a distant place, reconciling with his innermost powers, the legend known as Sting returns to the battle of his life. Behold, he cometh with lightning and clouds. Every eye shall see him, especially those who fought him. O oh, death, where is your sting? And they all shall wail because of him. O oh, hell, where is your victory? He is the Alpha, Alpha the, Omega, the Omega, the beginning, the beginning and the end. And, the end. and in, and these, in days, these days shall men seek death. death. And shall, and shall not, not find, find it. it, and shall, and desire, shall desire to die, to die. And, death and death will, will flee, flee from, from him. Sting, Jeff Jarrett, and Kurt Angle is the special enforcer. One epic battle, title versus career. Be afraid, Jeff. Be very afraid biggest pay-per-view in tna history and the most high stakes matchup as well main event time nwa world heavyweight title versus the career jared sting and yes special enforcer kurt angle back inside the arena here in detroit michigan so far at bound for glory two title matches two title changes it's time for our main event for the prestigious nwa world heavyweight title belt let's take a look first at the tail of the tape you look at the raw numbers between champion and challenger and you'll see sting's advantage in size both height and weight experience factor it's basically a wash between these two For nearly the past two months, Sting has disappeared. No live appearances, no TV appearances. What's he been doing to prepare for Jarrett? Biggest signing ever in TNA, the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. Only appropriate, he's been named the enforcer for the biggest title match. It all boils down to this. Jarrett puts his most prized possession at stake, the NWA title versus Sting's wrestling life. Could this be Sting's last wrestling match ever? To the ring, ladies and gentlemen, the introductions, Jeremy Borag. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the CompuWare Arena in Detroit, Michigan, it's time for your Bound for Glory main event of the evening. Introducing, first of all, the special enforcer for the main event, Olympic gold medalist, Kurt Angle. Listen to the reaction here in Detroit. Yes, the Olympic gold medalist. The best wrestler on the planet. Kurt Angle. Special enforcer for this NWA World Heavyweight title matchup. And Don, I have to go back to what we were told, I would say, what, what an hour, hour and a half ago, following that heated, volatile confrontation between Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle. Samoa Joe, on the orders of Jim Cornette and TNA management, was physically removed from the CompuWare Arena in Detroit. We're going to settle this one on one. Champion. It's his birthright in mind. 
And I know his title's on the line, but he considers that a part of himself. We talked about this earlier today, Don, and I think you really put it best. As we see Jeff Jarrett, oh yeah, get face to face with Kurt Angle. That NWA World Heavyweight title belt, you said, it's almost an extension of Jeff Jarrett himself. Look at this! We wondered if there was going to be a transformation. We wondered if Sting, during the two months that he took off, might come back with a new look. And check this out! He's not just got a new look. It's obvious he's got a new attitude. And you know what? It still never ceases to amaze me. We heard the crowd when Angle came out. But this is unbelievable! This is deafening! And look at Sting! Look at his body! He's a guy that has taken two months off to dedicate himself to one thing, this match, and you can tell all the hard work he's put into it. Look at it. Sting's got the baseball bat! Maybe that's his tribute to the Detroit Tigers! JB? Really? This time? This time, JB? It's all you! The following contest is a career versus title heavyweight championship title bout. When the bell rings, the man in charge, TNA official, Mr. Rudy Charles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the combatants. First of all, standing in the corner to my left, he weighed in this morning at 258 pounds and comes to us from Venice Beach, California. He is the number one contender for the NWA Heavyweight Championship of the World. This is Stan. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing, standing in the corner to my right, he weighed in this morning at 235 pounds and is the current reigning and defending NWA heavyweight champion of the world, the king of the mountain, Jeff Jarrett. Thank the crowd for Mike. I was just gonna say, <laughs> what an incredibly defined reaction to both champion and challenger. Here in Detroit, and boy Don, I tell you what, he took that ring robe off, and I think you're right on the money. Take a look at the physique of Sting. He told me that he's lost close to 20 pounds to get ready for this match. He just got himself into a rigor and into a shape like he's not been before because he knows what it's gonna take. Referee Rudy Charles holding that NWA World's Heavyweight title belt aloft, and yes, you hear the bell, the opening bell, and here we go. It's title versus career. Jarrett puts the gold on the line. Sting puts his career at stake. Ladies and gentlemen, this could be the last time that we see Sting competing in a wrestling ring. Think about this too, outside the ring is the special enforcer. Kurt Angle, he's there to make sure you don't see the shenanigans from Jeff Jarrett, and he's also there to make sure that Sting also goes the line right, and you see Jarrett right there. Just snapped one off on Sting, and again, how about that? talked about how Jeff Jarrett considers that belt. It's him, it's a part of him. And yes, a lot of people hate him, and you heard the crowd, but don't disrespect him, I'll tell you that. Did you see the sly grin on the face of Jarrett? after they hooked up, after they locked up in mid-ring, and Jarrett was able to take Sting down to the mat with ease. Shot off the rope, Sting attempts that high hip toss, and Jarrett answers with a high hip toss of his own, and you can just sense the level of confidence rising in the champion, Jarrett. 
Well, Jeff Jarrett wants to be the one to say I ended Sting's career. How many people can say that about an icon? How many people can be the one to come out and say, look, it was me that ended Sting's career. That's the goal of Jeff Jarrett right here, and think about it. That's a mark on your record that nobody can ever take away. The close-up camera look at Sting's face, it was almost that look of bewilderment at what we've seen here in the opening minute of this matchup. Attempted another hip toss out of the corner, but Sting's got his arms hooked on those tough steel cables. Turns Jarrett around in the corner, swings with a wild right hand, and Jarrett comes back with another hip toss. And what we're seeing here in the opening minutes is Jeff Jarrett out wrestling Sting. Jeff Jarrett has come into this title match, Don. I think more prepared than I've ever seen him, and I don't know if it's ring rust on the part of Sting. I don't know if Jeff Jarrett has his number at this point, but I can tell you this. To this point in the match, Jeff Jarrett has thrown Sting off of his game. Oh, absolutely. Look at Sting. He's looking a little confused. You know, you're right. He was gone for two months, and yeah, he was getting himself mentally focused and getting himself ready. But he, but he hasn't wrestled in two months. Where Jeff Jarrett has constantly been in the ring, has to deal with different situations. And think about it, Jeff Jarrett has just come to this match. Look at him. He is so fluid. I've not seen Jeff Jarrett so short and this crisp in a long time. But Jeff Jarrett is showing everybody right now why he is king of the mountain. And who got the better of it right there at the end of that exchange? And now we sense frustration on the part of Sting. Did you see that? Yes. He slapped the corner turnbuckle. And he you have to wonder if maybe doubt is creeping into the mind of Sting. He put his career on the line in this match. He took two months off to get prepared both mentally and physically. But I've got to be honest with you, to this point, it's been all Jeff Jarrett. Oh, it has been completely Jeff Jarrett. Sting, I think, just trying to find some kind of an advantage, something that he can get it going his way. Nice block right there, and now Sting's showing some life. That's what he's got to have, but Jarrett able to go under a beautiful block kick by Jeff Jarrett. And look at Sting, he gets out of the ring. Swing and a miss with the clothesline by Jarrett, then he drilled him, yes. Drilled him with that drop kick, Jarrett did connect, rather. And now, there it comes, the Jarrett stretch, as we see outside of the ring, oh. Sting eye to eye with Kurt Angle. But, oh, Jarrett, he's cocky and he's confident. I think right there, that's what Sting needed to do. Get out, regroup, just change the plan. Whatever it is, Jeff Jarrett right now is owning you. He's owning you in that ring. And that is just, the new look has not intimidated Jeff Jarrett in any way. Yes, certainly a more colorful Sting. In appearance here with those red and black tights, the different white and red face paint than we have seen Sting have in many, many years. And Jarrett, you yep, you it. can see that level of cockiness because he's bad now in Sting. Look at this, that's why you do get the crowd behind you. Get the crowd behind you. Did Jarrett just spit at him? Wow, that's, now you can see Sting just reaching mad, realizing. Coming right at him, and look at this, Jeff Jarrett telegraphed and look at Sting. Puts on the brakes, takes it off, slaps him off. Mid-ring power bomb by the challenger. Wow, that's what he needed right there, just to take the wind out of Jarrett's sail. Gonna take him up to his shoulders, check this out. Oh, oh. right on top of the ropes. Dropped him right in the middle. Oh, oh. 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 outside. Up and over the top, Jarrett crashes down to the arena floor. And you see Kurt Angle, yes, the special enforcer around the ringside area. Oh, Jarrett just shot Angle, and Angle shoved him back. Well, Jeff Jarrett's trying to let him know, look, I'm the king of the mountain, I'm the champ. You can't do that to me, but Kurt Angle said to him, look, I'm the enforcer out here, get back in the ring. You're damn right. King of the mountain, Olympic gold medalist. Sting just waiting, just building confidence, getting more and more. Jeff Jarrett trying to impose his will on Kurt Angle. And it's not working. Look at look at Sting asking him to come in. Now Sting says, I'll come out then. I'll tell you what, I'll come out. He busts him right against the rail. Drops down to the arena floor. You're right, takes Jared, just flings him right into the steel. Grabs him by the blood locks. Runs him around the ringside area. Oh, there goes Jared again. This time, chest first into the guardrail. I think Kurt Angle's let Sting go a little bit here. Just because Jared got cocky with him, so he figures, hey, his camera pad got knocked down. He was in the way of the battle. Rough situation around the ringside area. You're right, cameraman just went ass over tea kettle. Now the referee, see. look at the referee telling him, look, what, what? Kurt Angle just threw the referee into the ring. Oh, and Sting just flung Jared again in the guardrail. I think what Angle was doing right there was telling the ref, look, I'm the enforcer outside, you get in the ring. I like it. Gonna try and do it again, but no, this time there's a reversal, 
and this time Sting goes back first into the steel. Pushing cameraman out of the way, picking up a steel chair. He's measuring Sting, the champ. Nope, Kurt Angle gonna take that steel chair out of his hand. Well, you can only test him so much, and you can see Kurt Angle right there standing up. And now you see Sting just standing, waiting behind, and there it is. Just Eric worried too much about Kurt Angle, not worried about the task at hand. This was the idea behind TNA management and Jim Cornette to position Angle outside as that special enforcer. Now, up the ramp. Oh, oh man, what a suplex. Drops him right on his back. What a shot right there. That'll knock the air right out of there. Now listen to Sting and the crowd mimics him and he looks at Kurt. You saw that? Kurt Angle said, okay, that's enough. Now work it back in. Absolutely oh, no, no. Pro no protection there as Jarrett went back first on that entrance ramp. Now Sting with that steel chair follows up and you know what? He stopped Jarrett from using the chair and he just stopped Sting as well. Well, he's got to. And look, Sting, I don't think he'd believe it. Oh, oh wait a minute. Did wow. you see that? Well, Sting ducked though. He was going for the back of Sting's head. You think so? Oh, I, I don't you? know. Jarrett just crashed right into Angle and then snapped Sting right over. You think that was an accident? Oh, it had to be an accident because Sting just stuck at the right time. If he wouldn't have, he'd have cracked Sting. But he did end up hitting that chair right into Angle. You think he did it intentionally? I mean, look how things worked out here for Jarrett. He's got Angle down and out. He's got Sting in trouble. Going to take him out and, oh, he drops him again. Wow, he leveled. He leveled Angle. Didn't see it coming. Level him straight on with that chair. And now, Jeff Jarrett, I don't think he planned it. I just think he's being... You know, take up, taking the opportunity there that's in front of him. Now puts the boots to Sting in mid ring. He's got Sting in trouble here, and Jared again drives that boot right into the shoulder of the challenger, who yes is putting his career on the line. To the off the ropes, ducks that back elbow. Sting springs off again, and here comes the sleeper. You can see right there he's got it holding Sting, trying to. Work his head out of that grip right there, and oh man, Jarrett's just applying it with such force right now. Jarrett has the sleeper hold applied on Sting, nowhere close to the ropes. There you see that over the shoulder camera shot as Kurt Angle has made his way back up to his feet. He was down on the ramp after that collision earlier. Angle's back up as a special enforcer, and Sting's digging down deep to break the sleeper. Nice elbows right there to the gut, and that's what you do, take the air out of Jarrett, then he'll have to release that grip. Oh, but Sting, you can see them both fighting, and it just looks like Sting can't, still can't seem to get a grip on him, and now he's ducking, now he's got a middle. Oh, mid-ring collision for both of them. Both men go for the flying cross body block. Both men connect, and both Sting and Jarrett are down. I was just looking outside the ring. You can see Kurt Angle over there where he took the shot. He's trying to get his composure. You can look at him, but he looks like he's getting it back together, but still. You gotta wonder what's going through his mind. TNA official, yep, senior referee Rudy Charles putting in the count. He's at five right now. Everyone counting along here in Detroit. Six and oh man, he's no, no movement. Not even moving. No movement from either Sting or Jarrett. Look at this. Now he's at eight. Eight. There's nobody moving. At nine. nine. They're both like that. Here he goes but for. Wait a minute. Eight. Look at this. This be done with a count out. The special enforcer has just become the special referee. Senior official Rudy Charles dumped out to the floor. He just got it on. Get it on. Let's tie him loose. He's got them both up. That's what you do. He said, now look at him. Just throw it blow after blow. Sting yeah. fighting back. Sting getting the better of it here. Repeated shots for Jarrett. Gonna fire him off into the ropes. Here goes Jarrett up. Inverted atomic drop. Right. Oh, and then he just takes it right to him as Jared tries to get to his feet. And he does it with another one, Mike. Another clothesline. Stinger splash in the corner. He caught Jared completely unaware. Punted from behind. There it is. Scorpion death drop. Cover. Angle one, counts one. Two. two. Oh, he just gets his shoulder up just in time. Whew. Just that close to a new champion, Sting on the verge of becoming the NWA World's title holder and also keeping his wrestling career alive. I like what Angle did right there. He went to Sting and said, hey, no, he got the shoulder up. I mean, it wasn't a slow count. It was right on. Kurt Angle making sure it's all. He just decided to take it over himself. Here goes the stroke, oh! and he hits it. Planted him face first. Jared hits his patented move. Tells Angle to count. Angle down for the one, count. One, two. two. Whoa, he 
you got the shoulder up, but you gotta give Angle credit. You have to. Perfect cadence from Kurt Angle, now the special referee, the former special enforcer. Jarrett now picks up Sting at the head, at the hair. Rocks him, right hand to the jaw. Uh-oh, gonna go for a pile driver here, but Sting fights it off. Can he put his weight advantage to use? You saw it in the tail of the tape. Look at this, oh, oh, he does it right Sting. to the head of Jarrett. He's got it right here. Pin, two. two. Oh, man, now you talk about split second. Wow. Just, Just a split second. It's gonna say the same thing. How close can you come? Sting making his way up the corner, and Jarrett cuts him off low blow from behind. Well, you can see right there, he turns into Kurt Angle, and Kurt Angle just giving him the what for right there. Now Jarrett gonna make his way up into oh, the corner. This. Is he gonna go for the stroke off the middle rope? Here it comes! This could end it right here, and Sting, though, fights back, realizing his career's on the line, and then he sends Jarrett going. Yeah, just tosses him right down to the to the mat, and oh, oh man, went for a splash out of the corner. Jarrett gets both knees up, made contact with the chest of Sting. Give Kurt Angle credit right there. He's making sure both these guys do it in the ring right here. Now look at this. Could he be going for? He's going to go for the figure four. He of course sure he is. is. It's his patented move. He twists, and he's going to cap it off now. He's got that leg hook. Figure four. And look at the ring positioning by Jarrett. Dead center. Middle of the six-sided ring. Where's Sting going to go? There's nowhere for him to go, and he just keeps pulling back on it and pulling back harder. He's just trying to damage Sting and end it for him. And look at Sting. Does he have anything left? You can see the pain on his face, Mike. Shoulders of Sting momentarily down for a two-count from referee angle. Not sure if we caught it or not. We were in so tight that time as we saw Sting. Can he use his power here to turn him over? He has turned him over. Jeff Jarrett, oh, able to get loose. And now look at this. Jarrett going to try it again. Going to work on that leg. Gonna oh, look at it. this. Ankle lock right in Kurt Angle's face. Check this out. He's using the ankle lock Kurt right in front of Kurt Angle. Angle's famous submission move applied here by Jarrett. Oh, man. He thought, well, you know what? That's the kind of resiliency he can show. You got to do anything it takes. He and touched what the a statement that would make. Sting's fingertips touched the ropes, but Angle did not call for the rope ah. break. And he couldn't hold on to him. And Jarrett ah. just pulled him right ah. back. And you can see Sting just fighting everything. Jarrett not going to let up on it, though. Look at him. Just hold it on. First, it was the figure four. Now it's the ankle lock. But Sting somersault rolls through. And Jarrett goes out to the floor. Wow, that's how you counter that. Sting able to somehow get Jarrett off of him. You could see that Kurt Angle was ready to count him out if he would have tapped, but he didn't do it. Sting obviously favoring his knee as he gets back up to his feet in the ring. You can see now hopping on, on one leg, Don, oh, he because fought. of the, the effects of first the figure four and then the ankle lock. And well, how about this? He's Baseball got his bat. comes into play. He's got his bat right there. He said no. Look at this, Kurt Angle not going to, oh, look at though. Whoa. Sting saying no. Sting with the baseball bat pointed right at the chest of Wait a minute, Jared. Jared got to get oh. But look at this. Sting, Sting got it. Yeah. Yeah. He said, oh, I got your guitar right here, Jared. And look at him. Here he goes. Turn him over. Got it. Turn him over. He's got it. He's going to turn him over. Can he do it? He's got it. Yeah. Get Jared on. What do you say, Jared? Look at this! Fighting. Oh, he's applying the pressure! Is he gonna tap? Is he? Look at gonna... Jared fighting it! He's tapped Get it, Mike! Ladies and gentlemen, you have been witness to a very, very special night in the history of professional wrestling and in the history of this TNA organization. What you have been a part of, everyone here in Detroit, everyone watching at home, this is a night, this is a moment, this is a picture that we will never, that we will never, ever forget. And look at Jeff Jarrett right there. 
stunned that he doesn't have that belt. He's got to look at Sting holding up in the air. But one thing about Jeff Jarrett, you can't take away the four and a half years, the different times he's held that title more than anybody, longer than anybody as he watches Sting celebrate. You're right, Don. We saw that look on the face of Jeff Jarrett, almost as if Jarrett was saying that he could picture himself being the one celebrating, holding the NWA World Heavyweight title belt aloft, but that's not the case. Sting A saves his career, and B becomes the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Man, how about that taking the guitar shot? And he just didn't even let it face him as he fought through it. Jared had to know it was over then. And when he got that Scorpion Deathlock in, unbelievable night, unbelievable night. And another great camera shot looking over the shoulder of Jared. Jared holding his head at this point as Sting straps on the gold, positions it in place. The crowd, Look at they're that. going crazy. Sting Tell soaks it in. Jarrett obviously frustrated. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an incredible night. For Don West, I'm Mike Today. Thank you very much for being a part of Bound for Glory.